Three, two, one. All right, here we are. Terry's back. Terry, how are you, brother? Eric, I'm fine. Thanks for asking. You're welcome for asking. Um, before we get into Terry, wait, no, wait, wait, no, before we get into anything, oh, you're we welcome go. for your freedom, sir. You're welcome for your yeah, freedom. Yeah. I, I, so for those who don't know, Terry personally gave me my freedom based on his service in Desert Storm. Yeah, you'd be speaking Arabic without me. So again, I want my uh, I want my discounted Applebee's. They're bringing back the Dollarita, so that's good for you, right? I d I didn't know that. Oh yes, I've seen the commercials, and oh, there goes Frank. And as I said last night, as as a veteran of many <laughs> a Dollarita, as a, as a as a veteran of many Dollaritas at Applebee's during my time in Roseville as a recruiter, I can confirm that you should not attend any Applebee's that has Dollaritas going on. It is. Ugly, <laughs> ugly. I bet. It, I bet it's ugly. Yeah, you been to Vegas? I do. I just got back. Funny you ask. I just got back two nights ago from Las Vegas, but it's a work trip. Like I never have any yeah. fun there. Um, oh, here we go. Yeah, there we go. Well, the point we is, go. so there's a casino. It's, it's these little dogs. Larry is Larry is the is the best dog on God's earth. Yeah, he doesn't make hey, a noise. Everybody, chill out. Yeah, thank you. Give him the knife hand. Tell him, Team Sergeant Terry said, shut the. Okay, and let's move on. Well, there's a casino dog. there, O'Shea's, it's called, and and right in it they have dollar beer, so Michelob lights, and dollar margaritas, and it's been that way for like 25 years, maybe longer since I've been That's going. That's kind of cool though. Yeah, I mean, you should never get the dollar margarita. You should get the dollar beer because you know it's an actual beer, right? It's in a bottle. Yeah, dollar margarita. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just mix. It's you're just, rolling the dice. You're yeah. rolling the All right, so hold on. Let's back it up. All right, I just want to put out. You know, I always say what I'm drinking and why I'm going to be, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. So obviously brought to you by America's Native Spirit Bourbon. Uh, that's what I'm going to have tonight. But before that, it is Elijah Craig uh, Old Fashioned Week, which really goes for like almost two weeks. So I don't know why it's called Old Fashioned Week. But there's not a problem with that. And so that's what I'll be going with first. I got a nice little old fashioned. I've got dialed up with some Elijah Craig toasted barrel. And then I'm going to move into the old Forester 1910. All right. So that's what we're going to go with. Terry, um, I heard you say you're getting ready to rehearse for a play before we started recording, and you're getting super hammered. So what are you drinking? I'm not drinking. You're not making me do this, <laughs> Eric. I'm having iced tea right now because I have to in a couple hours. Yeah, iced tea. It's delicious. <laughs> it's delicious. Uh, and by the way, dude, last time we talked, it's funny because I learned something from you. Like, I never really understood the whole bourbon thing, and you were talking yep. about – Bottled and bond. The term you used, uh, bonded or something. Or Bottled some... and bond. Yeah. Bottle... Yeah, dude, that was cool. I never, never knew that. Never knew yeah. that. Uh, so I had the Leopold five year bottled and bond, and we taught Terry what that actually means. First product in the United States to be regulated by Congress, eighteen ninety seven. I did not know that. You know the problem is, man. I several years ago, I sort of lost my sense of taste. Um, like I and I thought it was a brain injury. Like I really taste food mostly now by memory. And so, yeah, so I can't even really discern, like I'll taste stuff, food or drink, and it will, I'm tasting it by memory generally. Like there's, I'll get some of it, but I've lost like a lot of my sense of smell and taste. And I don't think it was the cocaine habit. I think it, I don't know what it was, man. I, I don't know what it was. But this my, wasn't the, this wasn't the COVID shit either? No, no. Cause this was right years before, before that. Oh, years yeah. before that. Yeah. So I kind of taste food by memory. That's which sucks. doesn't. Yeah, it's not as good, man. I really don't enjoy food and drink the way I used to. It's very utilitarian for me now. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and that kind of ties into, so for those who don't know, or some of those new listening to this, uh, I talked to Terry about two years ago, a little bit more than two years ago to the day, and he was convinced he'd be dead already in a VA hospital living alone by himself. And he's clearly not dead. He's also, it doesn't look like he's in a VA hospital. I've seen some of those. They don't look this nice. Um, no, you also I mean, you're alive and you have more living creatures around you, so that's good. I got more aminals. I'm wearing my uh, he my uh, cold attire, cold, cold shirt set by Jimmy or Is that the uh, unreleased material you got there? And uh, actually, dude, I was I, so I was just in Vegas doing a work trip. It's a bunch of retired SF guys doing this teaching thing. But right before that, I was at Robin Sage, and when I uh, when I was down there, I ended up linking up with Jimmy and uh, the softly people 
uh, Doug Keyswater, and and we played a, a Call of Cthulhu game, and it was really it was a lot of fun playing that game with Doug. Is like playing with a goldfish that has Tourette's. <laughs> like, like I easily. I, I mean, I don't. I don't. <laughs> no, he just he just like, boom, whatever comes to mind. He's just like, that's a goldfish with Tourette's. It was great. It was a lot of fun. Is this I got the Dungeons a, and Dragons I, 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 thing? I bought it before that with some of my friends. Is this the Dungeons and Dragons thing we talked about? Yeah, and it's not Dungeons and Dragons. It's it's Call of Cthulhu, but it's a version of it called Pulp Cthulhu. Call of Cthulhu is a like a tabletop role playing game like D and D, but it actually that a Metallica um, song as well. Call it yes, yes. Well, could they be loved? Yes, way to way to loop it into to, to modern culture. I wouldn't call that's it modern. 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 That's, like that's an eighties song. Yeah, yeah but, uh, hardly modern. But it should be. Maybe we need to return to eighties culture. Well, I mean, so Call of Cthulhu came out in eighty one. I think D and D came out in seventy six, and it was a very it's a tabletop game like D and D, but it's less combat driven it's more investigative but ah pulp cthulhu pulp cthulhu your characters are a little harder to kill think more of like uh indiana jones type characters or like brand brendan fraser in the mummy or you know or terry shepherd in the green berets or terry shepherd in big trouble in little china that <laughs> yeah. kind of big role in that one huh yeah i had a big role in that big role in that. <laughs> big one all right big one. so there, there's a there's, like i did say that Sometimes it just happens to work out that way because there's just a ton of shit going on in the world, right? And I think yeah, it's, been a, well, it's been a slow couple news weeks. It's been yeah. a couple slow news weeks. Um, but before I, I ask more about that stuff, um, a real pressing question I think is super important, and people should know what Terry thinks about this. But your opinion on sneeze guards on salad bars? What do you mean? Do you, are they good or bad? I don't really. I haven't been to a salad bar forever. Right. Right? Well, it's so ra- it's just the most random shit where you just see the sneeze guards, right? Like who is like, you know what we need to do? We need to put a window that also serves as a guard from all these nasty people up at a a, a salad bar and a buffet, just sneezing and coughing all over the fucking place. Like that was I a wonder- really wise move, don't you think? Yeah, sure. Good idea. I mean, I think I'm not a salad bar guy, so I don't know. <laughs> um, you, but I mean, you I, were in your prime I, during I salad have, bars. When I have patronized an establishment with a salad bar that has a sneeze guard, Going I'm for great out. for the for the hygiene piece. But you have to reach underneath, and it's sometimes mm-hmm. really hard to get like this the uh, sunflower seeds scooped onto your salad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what is it like? I I don't. Do you put sunflower seeds on your salad? I've never. Not understood. a salad bar or the sneeze bar. I don't understand that sneeze, sneeze uh, barrier. Whatever. You call yeah. It. Okay, well, that's enough of that. Also, so anyway, our buddy Julio Rosas, I said I would say this, he's over in Israel right now. I don't know if you know. I know, I saw that, man. That dude is, yeah, yeah. Still wearing probably grunt style shit, though. Yeah, well, he's he's always going to be, he's he's a fucking Marine. What do you expect? Yeah. Um, Well, anyway, Julio Rosas, as we said, he is over in uh, Israel right now. He just left town hall, and he does have his sub stack going on now. So if you could, can support the young man who's over there. Either that or he's going to get stranded in Israel, and then we're going to have to send Terry to go get him out of there himself. So please support I'm, 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 I'm too old to do that. And uh, but he's done, you know, it's funny. It's kind of cool watching his sort of career sort of take off, right? I mean, it's yeah. The, yeah, he's done well. Mostly he's done peaceful. Yeah, mostly, yeah, that was his thing. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. Peaceful. I think that's what his sub stack's called, too, is mostly peaceful. So Oh, that's perfect. Got actually. a brand. He's got a brand now. Got to so, have a brand, kid. That, that's a good point. I, I mean, and I'm not... This isn't to make fun, but I feel like it's just a natural evolution of just history, men while we're living in our moments and in our era. And you you just said you're too old to do some shit. So you're like, what, 57 at this point? I'm going to be 58, like a couple months. Yeah. So what, like, in all honesty, how does that make you feel in terms of shit that's just going on? Do you, do you feel like you, you're, you've you done your part already or do you feel like, man, this is just something else, but I'm not quite where I would love to be? in order to participate if necessary or that's I a just good, think it's hard to look at right yeah dude that's a really really good question i think i you know and i was just with was i was just with a bunch of sf guys in las vegas working and one of them was we were on uh one of my best friends we were in c110 together in germany and we've been through a lot together we just he's a a year and a half younger than me but He's beat up and we were kind of laughing about the idea of like what we used to be. Yeah. <laughs> Cause we were killers. Yeah. And you know, now we're just kind of old guys that are maybe moderately dangerous. Uh, <laughs> if the, if we can line up the variables, yeah. which I try to teach people, like you got to line shit up in your favor. 
Uh, maybe in the old days, you could just kick in a door like Leroy Jenkins. But when you get my age, you start trying to, let me do this first. And I can line that up and I got a good shot. Yeah. Okay. But I, I think I, you know, what? I, I, I hate to say this. I actually do feel a little kind of not give a fuck ish. I, 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 I do care. Um, yeah. but I feel like, man, I mean, at, at some point, I think, we can lead the horse to water, but we, we can't make it drink. And I, I do think uh, that, you know, that I think what has to happen uh, in, in order for it to really change, really change, like for things to go, Hey man, this is not the right direction. There's gotta be real suffering. And right now yeah. that hasn't quite happened. Yes. Food's expensive. Like if you pay attention, like I love being told by my government, we defeated there. Everything is hunky dory. And I'm like, dude, have you filled up your gas tank or have you gone to the grocery store and pay everything super expensive? But I still feel like the country has been so rich and successful that it can absorb a lot of that bad shit. And eventually, though, I think there will be a point where nothing's going to change until people start really losing things, really losing things. And I, we're getting there. Uh, we certainly lost a lot of freedom. Uh, we've certainly lost a lot of uh uh, agency in our lives as far as who we vote and in and, 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 and what they're able to what they able actually do for us when they're, when they're in, in in power but yeah man I kind of I'm sort of tired man and it's an age thing and kind of like look dude we've, we've we've given it all to you if you can't figure it out right now maybe you got to put maybe I got to stop being the adult and telling the kids to not touch the hot stove just put your fucking hand on the hot stove matter of fact I'll hold it down for you right. and then I'll let up and go what do you think? Are you still going to do this or not? I, I don't know. What, what? You're a younger guy. You're you're more recent. You know, we got guys like Clay Martin that are, uh, you I mean, know, Clay and I are really like the same age, age for the most part. Him and I are the same age, but even you know, what are you guys like? Like thirty eight? No, no, no. I'll be forty three in December. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you you look younger. Clay, Clay looks. Well, I know, Terry. I know. Thank you. I know. Yeah. So, yeah. You know why? Because because you're because you're you engage in physical fitness and bourbon. Exactly. Uh, I, that's the secret to the world. So there it is. Everyone yeah, so you like, you want some proof? Oh, don't drink alcohol. Fuck you. Look at Eric. He looks pretty good to me. I'd fuck him. Wait, what? <laughs> Let's move on. But like, Clay, uh, Clay, you know, Clay's doing good work too because he's putting yeah. out like all these different videos. And, and now he's doing the video basically. The yeah, which that's is really cool, which is really cool because Clay's for free. Still he's telling you for free. And it's, yeah, I actually have to go on, uh, on, on the Twitter. Yeah, I, I'll never call it X. Go on Twitter and just, I got to boost that. He doesn't need my boosting, but, uh, you know, I finished actually the audio book for him. It took forever oh, really? um, <laughs> because of just like in and out traveling. The dude, a great guy here at the Outer Banks, but, uh, you know, yeah. getting him and I in the same room, but we got it done. It's just in post-production. But, 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 but I guess what I'm saying is guys like Clay and other people that are, that have been in this for a while are still like, they still got that drive. I, I just don't have quite as much of that. I'm, I'm not going to roll over. But I don't feel as like the drive to even just a few years ago, I was more out on Fox News and talking. And I'm kind of like, I don't know, man. I like I, I yeah. I just kind of how I want to hang out with my dog, honestly. Yeah. I, I think a lot of people want to do that. And that kind of ties into I I mean, I can make it tie into it, but it, it was something I was gonna eventually get to. But we talk about the the issues and challenges with meeting recruiting goals, right? And the main <laughs> the main thing I've seen when I left that world over a year ago is I mean, you can incentivize shit all you want. The problem is this generation that's of age and needs to be the ones filling those ranks. Most of them are unqualified anyway, but they're not there. Yeah. The, ones, the, 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 the market you have to pull from that are qualified. They don't see a, any like calling to that. There's no calling and there's no obligation. In my opinion, I don't feel they have an obligation to the country anymore. I think they just well, view this as a place they live. No. Well, that's just, that's exactly right. I, but there is a little, a, a bit of an addendum to that. I also work out at Robin Sage four or mm -hmm. five times a year, uh, which if people don't know, that's the final exercise that you go through for your special forces training to get your green braid. That's the big guerrilla warfare exercise where the team goes into isolation planning and then they infiltrate and they meet the guerrillas and they got to like train them and go on different missions with them. They've got to establish medical, medical, uh, medical uh you know sort of medical treatment and, and rat lines out of the country i play the underground leader in my lane so i'm the dude who knows the dude who can I, uh, you guys need guns i can hook you up with that so so i so say you're an instructor in a role but i will tell you that the cats that i see coming through there 
they're studs, man. I mean, and these guys, a lot of these dudes are straight through the X-ray program, yep. mid twenties up to like early thirties. Yeah. And, and, and I see, I always tell them at the end of it, cause a lot of them recognize me uh, just from some of my dumb TV stuff, but you know, we don't really quite break role, but at the end I go, Hey guys, cause they get to meet all of us after it's all finished. And I always go, Hey guys, uh, my name is Terry. Terry Shepard, I'm, I'm kind of a big deal. Uh, I'm a D-list cable celebrity and, uh, you know, 25-year vet retired. And I said, but hey, guys, I want you to know, uh, first of all, you guys all have pretty magnificent hair and don't feel weird if I run my hands through it later. <laughs> but, but, uh, but I tell them, I said, you know, man, there's a large uh, portion of the country, a lot of a big section of young American men right now that are absolutely rudderless and yep. they're concerned about, they watch Netflix, they get high, they're worried about getting laid. They're basically worried about being comfortable and not putting it out on, on the line for anything. And I said, you guys have decided to pick up the sword, uh, you know, and you're doing something about it. So whether you get the green beret after this, whether you have to recycle this, or even if you get removed and go back to a line unit, you have my respect because you're actually fucking doing something. So yeah. I do see, I, I guess what I'm saying is I do see there is a cohort of young men but they're even then. I didn't do it for the for the country. I really did. Yeah, I, know, I, did, I remember. Yeah, I did it to be tested, right? Yeah. I wanted to be that guy that was. I wanted to be like that cat that I saw in the book that was wearing tiger stripe fatigues in Vietnam. I'm pretty much almost their age, and um, but like that's really what I wanted. And you know, I I just but I do think, you know, listen, if you have the president of the United States come out and say, you know, our biggest threat is white supremacy, you have our Secretary of Defense come out and say. We have to, we're doing a stand down because it's white supremacy. I hate to break it to you, Mr. Austin. Most of the combat guys, the guys who are in combat arms, these are just numbers. I don't, I'm, I don't need to interpret it. It is what it is. The majority of combat arms, infantry, soft, all that kind of shit comes from rural and suburban white guys. It is what it is. So if you're, if and, and they're straight white men. And if and there's there's plenty of black guys in the unit and there's a lot of Spanish guys, but you know what I'm saying? You're basically taking a huge section of the dudes that are going to be the gunfighters and telling them, fuck you, we don't want you. Mm -hmm. So what did you think was going to happen? What did yeah. you think was going to happen? You know, like that's what's going to happen. Well, I wanted to, to tie back into what you're saying because, well, I, let me, here's a stupid army word we can use, but let me caveat what I mentioned, what you just described, the SF community. Oh, and the, the, your caveat I know. Well, so the 18X programs. So even in California, where I was recruiting from, never had an issue finding people that wanted to do 18X. Mm. Never had an issue with that. Put, I think I put in four in my time there. Um, never had an issue finding people to do that specifically or those right. dudes that would come in. I mean, the best unicorn ever was a dude who got a 99 on his ASVAB, walked in and said, hey, it's got this score. I just want to go 18X. He was gone in two weeks. Shit like that never happens. But that happened in the fucking Bay Area, California. Wow. White guy, but you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I guess that's but a bad I guess, thing. I guess that's an interesting point. I think because the dudes that want to be uh, an SF guy and go through the eight, by the way, for people who don't know, 18 X-ray years ago, if you wanted to be a green gray, you had to be in the army for a while. Yeah. Like I was an infantry guy. It was called a bear program. I was, in, I got to be E5 and then I, I got back from the Gulf War. Again, you're welcome for your freedom. Thank you. And that was went, it. There it is. Yeah. And then I went to selection. So Great. that's how Every time Terry says I need to thank him for his. And then once the, yeah, that's right. And then once the war started, we, we ramped up that x ray program. And, you know, some guys were getting through that probably shouldn't have. But in general, I saw a pretty high level. I think they do a pretty good job. The point is the cats that are going for that, they're already self-motivated. They're, right, they're already right, what yeah. they want to do. You, you don't really talk someone into doing that, right? They, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they show up going, I want to do that. And you're like, yeah. here's the paperwork. Here's your, yeah. your test scores are good enough. PT go, okay, yeah. have a nice day yeah, and off you go. Yeah. But you're right. In general, try to find, try to get dudes to get off the couch and and not be fucked up and fat and, and you know, not be comfortable just to join the military in general. It seems to be a pretty good challenge. And it, well, uh, the, So let me get your take on this real quick. So I know this is kind of different. But it is just the reality of where the army's going with the whole digital transformation and everything's becoming very tech driven and those scores to qualify for those jobs. I mean, it's actually harder than the fucking 18 X stuff, right? Where you need a one yeah. GT. Yeah. A lot of these jobs, you need one ten and higher on the GT score. And that's just hard for a lot of people to do. And the ones that do make that or do go into that career field, for example, they have no desire to join the army for fucking E4 pay. Right. They're right. going to go make they're going to go walk in the 130K anywhere in the country. Right. 
And then a lot it's of those people on a conversely filling those positions that we have just in our private companies, they're not even fucking from here. They're on yeah. those, right? So right. I mean, we're really being set up for a very odd point of failure, I think, because we're just not yeah, going to good... be able to meet that with our population. Yeah, man, that's a very astute observation. Unless you're going to start making E4s, get a like an SDAP of an extra $100,000 a year. Like, because well, how, how are you going to augment what they can be offered in the civilian community? Yeah, well, that's why I tell I, you know, I, I there was, I, it was cool. The other day, I was at this at the gym in my in my mom's town. I spend my time between. I'm at the beach now, and I spend my time here and at my mom's place in Clayton. And there's a gym there. I work out, and this guy comes up to me, and he said, "Were you a special forces guy?" And I was like, "I was." They said I'm retired because he saw one of my tattoos, and he yeah. starts talking. This this guy had been he done four years in the four years in the Marines as a mortarman, you know, basically their version of 11 Charlie. And he was asking yeah. me about selection and stuff. And here's a young motivated stud, you know, and actually he texted me the other day. I actually said, I said, here's my number. You got questions. If I can help you, I mean, I'm nobody, but I mean, if you got questions that I can help you. So we have people like that, yeah, but I always tell people too, like some of these friends of the family were talking about the army. I go, so you're going to be an infantry, you're going to go in the infantry. They're like, what? I go, why would you join the military and not be a gunfighter? I just don't get it. Like I, because like, to your point, those jobs are great. And if, if that's yeah. for you, that's cool. But like, you could make so much more money doing the same thing outside of the military. But I guess maybe if they want to do it for, for patriotism. It's, well, it's not know, for patriotism. For, it's for college. It's for benefit. And for college. That's another yeah. thing too, you know? like I yes. mean, if you're going to ask someone to go do something for three years and then walk into college 100% paid for it. I mean, to be honest, I didn't know anything about these programs, but when I learned them all, yeah, not a bad, it's not a bad idea. Not bad. Especially now with the post 9-11 GI Bill where you get just, you get fucking paid wherever you go. You, you could yeah. be enrolled at a class in San Francisco with the highest BAH in the country and live somewhere in the middle of nowhere, you do it remote, you're getting that BAH. I mean, it's a money-making opportunity. Yeah, I never thought that. So, uh, and, 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 and to that point, they're still having problems filling recruiting. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I, I Honestly, I don't – there's – aside from just massively, drastically cutting the goal, because keep yeah. in mind, this is, a, this is a new phenomenon. We never had an issue-making mission from a – army recruiting standpoint marines are still always going to make it because they're small they have a small number that they get and they focus on a very specific population but from the army standpoint we didn't start recently failing this until trump became president because he essentially doubled the amount we needed to meet for the goal yeah. right like under uh, obama the last year it was like thirty four thousand. he can do that well when the trump presidency finally took place and you know the, the goals for 2018 when it was really his first recruiting year it doubled it's like 79,500. And ah. I think the army got about 70 or 71,000, but they still failed it. And they never have come. Now they don't even come close. Now they're not close. And they just keep, they keep, I don't want to get too far into that. Cause it's just silly. Well, like, they does it, you, you, but you, you, they don't. Yeah. They, they know they, that world. yeah and they're, they're, and then just the way we are at this point. I mean, so let me just ask you that. I mean, like, you said it, <laughs> it's been a fairly, a, Fairly interesting few days of uh, media in the last week and a half or so. I mean, you've probably heard or seen this stuff pop up throughout your lifetime many times, but wh yeah. what is your overall take now that we're so bombarded with information? But you got well, the green shit thing, going on. You got this going on now. Yeah, with this, you know, yeah. I think Gaza one, again. Thing, one thing that's obvious, and I, I tried to, to do this, um, I'm, I'm actually pretty comfortable admitting when I don't know a lot about something. So if yeah. I don't know much about it, it's probably best not to talk about it or like, you know, have this strong opinion when you don't know. Now, so Israel- You can't do that on Twitter. So you yeah, have that's to great. I, 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 and everybody knows everything. Guys, I'm like, dude, just take a deep breath, dude. Cause you know, so much comes in and then two days later, it's completely debunked. Really but, yeah. I mean, with, with, with regard to Israel, like I, I have a soft spot for them. Cause you know, I've trained there. I got Israeli jump wings and that's I have- really cool. Yeah, yeah, and, and and I, uh, you know, I have, I have a, I don't have any Palestinian friends, not out of choice, just what have. I have one. Them. I do have oh, one. Yeah, and but I mean that's what I'm saying, like, and that's not because I've chosen that. It's just the way I've just never met. Any. Yeah, it's hard to. But come I've, I got that. lots of Jewish friends, and I got I got a bunch of Israeli friends, and so I like them, and they're the people. Those 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 are my friends. And by the way, all my close Jewish friends are very conservative. Like they actually. One of my good friends in New York, he's a, he's in Long Island. He hates he hates liberal Jews, and he's a he's a hardcore Jewish dude because he says he goes all they do is all they do is vote for their demise. Um, so I think 
I think it's interesting that, you know, it's funny that, you know, you can, and the other thing is too, you could criticize a country. You should be able to criticize a country and its policies, whether it's military, economic, whatever. And it doesn't have to be, you, you don't like the people or it's not racist or it's not anti-Semitic. You, you don't, you could have a problem with Israel. Israel spies on us. They do. I mean, like, you know, it's, you don't have to be complete, but, but you can actually criticize a country without being a racist, yeah. but mm-hmm. they won't let you do that. And the other thing they're like, well, then you must hate all Jews. No, I clearly don't. I mean, and right. I, I'm actually more on the side, I'm on the side of Israel for this because I just, they're my friends, the ones I know, yeah. but, but I would, I would also say it's interesting how American, the American Jewish population, which tends to be very liberal and Democrat and vote Democrat. They're constantly looking for the for the bugbear under the bed of some like, you know, white Klansmen, but they've never gone after Ilhan Omar or Rashida Tlaib or any of the other squad that's clearly anti-Semitic. So I, they just to me, they have no credibility because they really only use anti-Semit, anti-Semitism as a as a club to kind of threaten people. Yeah. You know, I, I that's how it seems to me. As far as what's going on over there, I said this to someone was writing something. I said, dude. In my opinion, Israel should just tell everybody to leave them alone and they just need to do what they need to do because they know what they need to do. They're there on the ground. If I was Israel, I would tell Blinken oh, yeah. probably to fuck off. We don't want your money because it's going to come with conditions. What we want is for you to just get out of our way. Let's We're going to do what we're going to do. It would be nice for us to kind of sort of body block Iran a little bit. And that's another problem. We've been playing kissy face with Iran since Obama. And so, you know, if you coddle those kind of guys, then you make them stronger. And, you know, Hamas and Hezbollah are, are absolutely critically linked. I, there's no easy way out of any of this. Um, but you can't, you, I, I think I, I, one of my tweets, I said, you know, paragliders dropping out of the sky to, you know, murder civilians at a dance party just encapsulates the West's threat perfectly because how does, how does that happen without knowing like you can't just show well, up and paraglide like, right you have to rehearse don't you where don't they you? train that shit yeah. like, you know, like, no, one, no one noticed there was a bunch of paragliders like <laughs> they literally brought back the fucking glider infantry overnight right and this is yes, and paragl- paragliders dude like sometimes I see them on the beach I'm like yeah. Yeah, that looks pretty fun but you have to practice you can't, yeah, so you can't just they- like hey here's your paraglide go over there good luck well, there was a video of one dude got fried in some power lines, which was pretty kind well, of Well, that's cool. good. Like, good for them. Yeah, everybody's like, oh, what a bummer. Let's move on. But I mean, like, yeah, yeah I think, and people are like, how did this uh, intelligence, how did the Israeli and American intelligence really fail on this? I don't know. Apparently it did. I, I don't think, I think it's a big ask. To, I don't know, man. Never say never, I guess. But it doesn't seem like the Israeli government would be willing to sacrifice all those people in that brutal way just so they could, have excuse to go, you know, yeah. bulldoze. Well, that doesn't, let, me, I, let me ask you. So I'm not going to read the whole tweet, but my last sentence in this tweet was governments elected or otherwise get everyday people like you and me killed. Yeah. So it's governments, right? Like we're talking about like, yeah, you don't know these people. So you don't really know if you don't like, I don't hate people anywhere. I don't have, can't, a, can't, yeah, you have to know them, right? Like, but it's the governments that are the reflection of what we're either told or we're made to believe is somehow indicative of everyone in that. Because if that's the case, we already know half the country hates whoever's in charge of us at one given time. Right. <laughs> yeah. So, right. Okay. Right. So should everyone just, you know, well, Americans are Biden or Americans are Trump. Like, like, right. So yeah, you can't no look is, at the people. Yeah. No group is monolithic. I, I, I've said this before too. I met, I met some incredibly nice, kind people in Iraq that would give you the shirt off their back, man. You know, that's a, really? that desert culture is actually very generous. I think that yeah. comes from the early Bedouins when it was not just a, a right thing to do for some kind of morality, but it's also a survival strategy because you may be the one who's lost and you come across them and now they're going to give you food and water and help you out. It's kind of like, it's kind of like when I was in Alaska years ago and I saw all these people riding around with like, guns on the back of their truck. And, and we were filming that show, dude, you're screwed. And we were coming back from where we were up by Denali. And it was a few of us in this guy's pickup truck coming down to the, we were driving down to Anchorage, I think, to get to the airport and the wheel, not the tire, the wheel of this guy's truck fell off while we were on the highway. That's the wheel was gone. It was like, we, what? The wheel's gone. So we're sitting there stranded and we're like trying to call back. And this dude comes rolling by this old guy Married to like an Alaskan, like an Inuit, like an Indian woman. And he's got guns all over. And he's like, you guys all right? And I was like, well, blah, blah, blah. He goes, well, 
I'm going back the way you came. So he took us back to where we were left from. He doesn't know us from Adam. And he just took all of us back and we fed him. We had this big meal for him. And then we ended up getting another transfer back. But the point is there's like a weird, there's like a weird self-sufficient, rugged individualism, but with, with, yeah. with generosity, because that is a survival strategy to help people out because you may be the one that needs help. And I've seen that in most parts of the world. And I've, I mean, every place I've been in all the different J sets, like I've, I've met people that are absolute shit, that are reptiles, that are just killers and rapists. And just, you know, we know these people, but I've also met very kind people. So I, it is, I try to separate that from the people that are running the show. Yeah, well, I think you you absolutely have to. And then this is kind of my my transition is because I, I was reading something on Twitter. I think it might have been Friday night. Um, yeah, it was probably Friday because I was driving down. I re-listened to what you and I talked about two years ago. And I know you mentioned, Francis, you're, so you're Catholic. Yes. Okay, so I started RCIA this year. So I'm going through that. I'm, I'm, I'm coming over. Right, right on, dude. Yeah. Good for you. So, yeah. So Father Dan Beeman, I've had him on. I don't know if you follow him or have seen him. Oh, he's Twitter. brilliant. Yeah. Well, I've, so I've had him on. He's kind of the guy that's – he's always been my go-to for everything. I right? had to go back. You, have you had him on your show? Yeah, he was on probably, I think, before you, but I'll send it to you. You can listen. Oh, it. It, was, it was great. Yeah, it was a really yeah. cool conversation. I, I would like to get him back on now that I'm doing this stuff. But he was here a couple months ago, and we hung out and slammed bourbon for like 10 hours. It was great. Uh, but... Catholics, Catholics, we drink. Yeah, that's, that's why. Hey, why do you think I'm coming over? Right. <laughs> um, but you were just talking about like there's so many young men in this country who are rudderless, and that's what he was saying. Like you got so many dudes who just they don't even, they don't talk to women, they don't go on dates, they don't try to find girlfriends, they just want to be on the internet, play ice, play their fucking video games, and you know by the time they're thirty, it's like now they're growing up instead of when they were you know twenty two generations ago doing this stuff, right? Um, so the religious component where I'm going with this was I read something about if this just keeps spiraling and you mentioned Iran and all this stuff, and then there's going to be this worldwide rising or uprising call for Muslims. Um, but what I noticed, but what I noticed, but what I noticed he neglected to mention, because don't get me wrong, just based on the way you look at Europe, you look at the West right now, there's a lot of Muslims all over. Europe's in trouble. Europe's in trouble. So there's no mention of is there going to be a call to worldwide Catholics? Or just because, again, let me go back up a level. We're talking about governments. I think where we are in the United States, most people, whoever's in charge, you got just enough people who don't want to have that government reflect them or be responsible for them or be responsible to them. Like I think a lot of Americans in this country still just are in love with the idea of being an American. They don't care about their government so much. They just want to be Americans yeah. and what it actually means. So if we come back down and like something like that on that scale kicks off, do you think the average American is going to support their government or are they going to support their religion? Man, that's a fucking good question. I, I, I want to say this about the Catholic Church. First of all, I'm glad you're doing that. Deus Volt, welcome to the fucking order. <laughs> and I would say this, my problem with Catholicism, I had I had an interesting experience the other day. I was at my mom's house and we went to church and we're walking in, to, we went to mass and I'm seeing all these people wearing masks again. And it was a, mm -hmm. it was a, it was a nine o'clock in the morning. So it's, mo you know, it's mostly old people and it was, it's not, you know, yeah. it wasn't like the church was built. And I, we're sitting there and, uh, you know, you know, at the one part in mass when, you know, he, he wishes you peace, you know, we get, we wish each other peace. And usually that used to be like, shake, I, you know, I kiss my mom and I shake hands around. Yeah. I turn around to this woman b behind me and I went to shake her hand and she just went like this, like, don't even fucking touch me. She looked at me like I was a leper and, and it just, it really, maybe it was wrong, but it kind of pissed me. And then I realized we're still not, that church is still not using sacramental wine. And I went up to the priest afterwards. He was an Indian guy. Uh, and he was kind of hard to understand, but whatever, you know, that's another thing, you know, just like we have a, a shortage of uh, military, we're also have this, it's hard to find, you know, American born priests to do this. I also think the Catholic church is going to be saved by Africans because Africans have real Catholicism. Yeah, but, Beeman just came back. He was just there. What that? Yeah, yeah. I said Father Beeman just came back. He was just there. I was going a couple of weeks. Dude, ago. Yeah. I, I wish Cardinal Sarah was our. I wish Cardinal Sarah. Yeah. Was our 
but I, but awesome. I, but I talked to the priest. I said, Hey father, I said, is it normal now in this church? to just not greet each other. And he goes, wow, you know, everyone's, everyone is afraid of COVID. I said, doesn't that seem kind of weak? I mean, like we're kind of past that. And I said, what about the sacramental wine? Is that gone forever? And he was just like, he looked at me like I was an idiot. And he just kind of, he just kind of dismissed me and walked away. And, and I realized oh, wow. the problem with the cap, the problem with the Catholic church in many places is that it's basically now run by and attended by mask wearing Biden voters, old liberal women. And I think the problem is that's not attractive to young men. The, the idea that Catholicism and Christianity writ large, but I'm, I'm talking, we're talking about the Catholic church, but Christianity in general, it's a lie. It's a huge lie. And it's a destructive lie that C Christianity and Catholicism has to be watered down, meek and weak. It's not, it's not mm -hmm. supposed to be that way. And it's not that people are, it's not that young men are not going to church because it's too, too, it's too hard. It's too soft. It, there's no struct. There's no discipline. Why am I walking into a mass when I see signs about respect life, pro-life, and yet our Pope has a private audience with Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi mm -hmm. who are rapid abortionists? So I, I, I said that to a priest one time. I said, how am I supposed to take this church hierarchy seriously when you're saying one thing, but I'm watching you do something else? So you don't take it seriously. And, you know, the crusades were justified. Did they go off the rails? They did. But but was it the right thing to do to go back and take the holy land? Yeah, fuck yeah, it was. And and the and the conquistadors, I don't blame them at all. And the Reconquista in Spain. Like, there's so much Catholic history. My favorite Catholic saints were the ones that were freaking killers and end up becoming like they changed. But they're these are rough men. Even St. Yes. Francis was kind of a party and he that, wanted to be a that's your guy, right? Yeah, and he wanted to I wanted to be a Franciscan, but he wanted to be like a knight. He wanted to be a crusader, he, but he just didn't have what it took. And what I'm saying is I want to see a return to Catholicism of a – and there's, a, there's some great guys on, on, on the internet. Yeah. The Chivalry Guild, have you read that dude? That dude puts uh -huh. out some great stuff. Well, follow that guy on Twitter. You need to do it right now. Yeah, yeah I've been, I've been, Chivalry I've Guild. A few good accounts. The Chivalry Guild. He's one of the best accounts you can read, and he he sort of sums it up really well. And I think that's what's missing. It's not that it's too difficult; it's that it's too lax, and and the laxity is what keeps young men away. Young men needs people need structure, and they need they need those rules, and they need those examples of. Of, of 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 Catholics with spines. I, I think so that's I, I, I can't stand I can't stand it. it's it's the biggest lie and and our enemies want to use that against us. Oh Jesus wouldn't do that. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. He told you to go get a sword. He told, so <laughs> I want to hear that. And 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 so it's it's been you know and, and the Catholic Church built everything you see right now. Thank, thank the Catholic Church. Exactly. Because, yeah. Because Western Europe is an amalgamation of Catholicism and the Greek democracy experiment, right? That's kind of what it was. It's the, the value of the individual, which the Greeks were, were, were doing way back when. It was melded with the Catholic Church. And that's what built Western civilization. That's what built our cathedrals. That's what built our society. That's built everything we have is because of that. Mm -hmm. And to deny that is just, you may not like it. Yeah, you you could be atheist. You, okay, cool. I don't care if you believe, but historically, right. you cannot deny that. Yeah. So what you're saying there, because there is a very big, and this was we talked about this because you know Father Beeman, he, he's a lot like yourself, right? He's he, he he's everything you just went down. He kind of went down as well. And, and Cardinal Sarah, we talked about talked about the Pope, um, but I think it may be where you're at because I've seen both sides. Where he's at is a very Southern Virginia is a very liberal area, right? Where yeah. I go up here, uh, totally different from what you described. Super conservative. Uh, everything that you probably remember or grew up with or would like to have in a mass, it's up here. I hap I'll I remember, happily, I remember, I happily will take I remember it. After that, I remember after that mass when I almost like, I felt like I was going to punch this priest. I was like, okay, I got to calm the fuck down. Yeah. But I told my mom, I told my mom, I'm a, let me sit on this phone book. So I, uh, I told my mom, I said, maybe I need to go look at uh, Orthodox Christianity, like go, go Eastern Orthodox or something, because they don't, they don't. Well, there's a guy in my, uh, in my RCIA class. He's from, uh, 
Uh, where the fuck is he from? Not Co- Serbia. He's from Serbia and he's, he's yeah. Eastern Orthodox. So he's in, yeah. He's, but yeah, so he, he's got yeah. some cool conversations whenever we're I in. like those guys, man. They're fucking hardcore. And you know, yeah. Serbia too, with all that, with all that shit kicked off in the Balkans, imagine being a Serb and being told by the UN that you have to give your shit to these people. And the Serbs are like, hold on a second. We've been spilling our blood in this land. We were the bulwark of the West to prevent the, the Muslim incursion right through here. We died here for this. So for you, UN, fuck you. We're not going to give that up. So I just think, you know, the Orthodox has appealed to me. But as my mom said, she, my mom in her wisdom, she goes, Terry, the, she goes, we're the church. I said, I know, mom, but but I just it's hard to 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 to. It's hard to yield to a hierarchy that clearly is just rotting and weak and is just not. Well, that's what Father Beam is. It's like the church is going to survive him. He'll be gone at some point. Yes, right? of course it will. And it will be a return back, I think. To I, think like. so that's, I, you know. I agree. But my question to him was like, well, how did it even happen? How did, how did, who voted for this fucking, like you guys selected him. Right. And it's just always. Man, you start getting it all went downhill after Vatican II. It all went downhill <laughs> after Vatican II. It all went you downhill. know, I, the, the more I like, because don't get me wrong, I'm still pretty young in this. It's only been a couple months, you know, and then I'm doing my readings and all, and, and you you find out or you read that, hey, everything's always going to be guided by the hand or guided by the hand of evil, the hand of good or the hand of evil, right? And you never know who it is. And maybe they they don't know in the moment that they're doing devil's work instead of the lord's work right but yeah of course that's why we're here with free will to try and figure that shit out and it's right we would have figured it out we probably wouldn't be here right now right we would we'd be right. but that goes all the way back to what i was saying like if, if this is a global thing and this becomes something like that what because you just brought up the serbs and we just see there's a, a mass going on there again in the borders of, of all that like everything's kind of going on again and maybe this that's a really good that's a really 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 good question you're talking about as far as like what are your allegiances going to be to? Is it going to be to to your country? Which, by the way, kind of hard to have an allegiance to a country that just pisses on me and has actually said I'm I'm the bad guy. And that we're not so, really a country. Like anyone can come. Yeah, in. Well, just, every, anyone's anyone. everyone's in America. It's an idea. It's not really like you know a thing. You're just you're an American yeah, if you want to be. I think it it was it's almost a natural build up where we just we kicked ass and then we got very comfortable and soft. It's weird because we want to protect the people who come after us. We want to make sure life is easier for them. Yeah. We make it easier for them. When it's easier for them, they are not forged into tough weapons. They're just soft, soft shell crabs. And then so the world crashes on them and they just give up. And so it goes back down again. It's that whole hard times thing. I, I guess it, it yeah. is a natural progression, but it's hard not to lose. Uh, to your question though, I don't know the answer to that. Because I don't, I don't really have a home in that right now, the current church hierarchy does not appeal to me. Guys like Beeman or Father Karapi, John Karapi, who I, who I know very well. He's, he was one of the guys who helped me come back. You know, what got me back to the church, Eric, too. Uh, it was not, I didn't have some epiphany. I didn't see any white doves or anything like that. I just started reading medieval history. And then I started reading lives of the saints and the early church fathers. And I was like, what the fuck? How did I, how did I not learn this? How did I not? Yeah. And then reading a lot of Chesterton too, GK Chesterton. I have a reading list for you. Yeah, no, I would, I would love that if you could email it to me or Especially something. Especially about GK Chesterton wrote two biographies of saints. One of them was St. Francis, which was amazing. And then he wrote a book about St. Thomas Aquinas. And I can't remember the name of the order that is St. Thomas Aquinas's order. These guys read this book and GK Chesterton is not a, a brother he's not he's not in that order but they actually came out and said this is the best biography of our saint that has ever been written so there's some i was yeah there's some cool books too about like ferdinand the third from spain you got to read about this guy why do we not hear about him he completely changed everything yeah so well, I, yeah Dev, I'll, I'll hit you up this to send me that for yeah, sure yeah we got i got you some shit that you can read that'll just kind of it'll just piss you off that we're not there now yeah <laughs> Right, which is kind of like, you know, I mean, I guess until Jesus comes back, we're just going to be out here doing this shit, right? So yeah, Stepping on our that. dicks. What do you think? So, you know, we see all these images and these portrayals of when, you know, Gabriel shows up, he's got the swords and everything, right? Yeah. Do you think, because I think, like, you think the modern Gabriel, he's going to come back with like fucking 
M4s with auto M4s and fucking scopes and all this shit. You know, just he's going to show up looking like Terry when he kicked in the fucking Iraqis doors, right? Don't you think that's how they come back? Like modern the, weapons, he, modern weapons of the time, right? He's going to show up with a slinged 240 is what he's going to do. <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah. That's what's going on now. Why not? Yeah, I mean, a sword, you know, swords still play pretty cool. I, you know, maybe we'd be better if we just still had swords, don't you think? I like swords, but it'd be cool to see to walk into a cathedral and see a stained glass, uh, stained glass with a dude with a Carl Gustav. How cool would that be? <laughs> I mean, I guess maybe in another three hundred years, that's what we'll have, I mean, right? You know, that's that's the that's the new warrior saint. Yeah. Why? Not? Yeah. So so uh, yeah, because I mean, you mentioned the Greeks. Like this is all like we're not original, and right? Like this, we're just no, the latest. Fuck no. We're just the latest. So it is going to happen. It's inevitable. I like to say this because we're always. Every time you see these like debates with presidential candidates, they're always like, are America's best days ahead? And they're like, yes, they are. And let me tell you why. And I'm just like, why don't someone just stand up and be like, no, they're not. But we're going to fix why we're still here. Because I genuinely feel like in another hundred years, you know, long past you and I being gone, but I can't see there being a a United States as we know it. I feel like it's going to definitely break down into maybe something more European with individual states being individual countries, the only difference is we have a we all speak the same language for for now, right? Yeah. We all speak English, but that might change. Well, I mean, maybe you'd be free to do it in whatever fucking state you're living in, right? Because it's no longer the fiftieth state. Maybe it's it's just the fiftieth country on North America. Yeah, nothing's permanent. I mean, like this, we've 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 my friend Andrew Wilkow. Uh, who's got a great radio show on Sirius, the, the Will Calvin Party. He talks a lot about so much of what's going on now uh, is like people just, they, they subscribe to the history of now. They really haven't gone and looked back and figured out and yeah. that they have no context for the shit they're saying. They have no precedent. They have no historical framework. It's like, this is what I believe now. So this must be truth. It's the history of now. And unless you have that under your belt where you can look back and go, oh, this makes sense. I've seen this. This was the lesson. Um, yeah, we're just going to crash. It's got, we have to crash. We have to crash because that's the only way clearly, as as Blade says, some motherfucker's always going to try to ice skate uphill. And we're just going to keep trying to ice skate uphill. That's good. And then, you know, Blade's going to get you. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Some motherfuckers always trying to ice skate uphill. We don't learn, man. We don't learn. We don't learn. Well, that's why I feel like there's got, uh, I guess, I mean, yeah. And you almost feel weird saying shit like this because it's just like, oh, wow, I can't believe you think like that. And it's I know, just like, I know, I know. that's not going to happen. I'm like, well, I'm pretty sure. It no seems all we were going to have the Peloponnesian Wars and no one thought we were going to have the fucking Crusades. And then, then they yeah. happen. And then it's just like, well, what are you going to do? And that's why I go all the way back to my very first question to you is like, do you feel like if shit really got so severe, so like apocalyptic and you're like, man, why the fuck am I 57 and not 27? Yeah. Or why am I 43 and not 23? Like when I went into Iraq the first time, right? Like right. that stuff I do think about because, yeah, I could sit here and be like, yeah, I'm actually – probably faster and stronger and everything I was and a little bit smarter, I hope, but you know, I'm still not. You're older. Yeah. You're just older. Right. You're and older, I don't, man. Hey, guys, man yeah. I would hate, what if I, I would look at that dog behind you. Oh, a little puppy. I'm looking at your yeah, dog. That's, that's, I, that's a little, that was uh, adopted. Uh, my girl has a dog walking business and she, she, yeah. was, she walked these dogs for this uh, old lady who just went down from dementia and they were going to give these dogs away. So she took that one. And, Larry still, I thought I was going to lose Larry a couple months ago, man. He wouldn't keep food down. He kept throwing up. And so, cause he's got tumors all over his body, but they're not, they're not operable and they're not cancer. And I thought maybe that's what's pressing on maybe some somewhere in his GI tract. And I took him to the, I have a great vet here, man. He's such yeah. a good dude, man. And he's like, he did an ultrasound. He's like, yeah, probably. So basically, basically, I just, I basically puree his food now. Like it takes me, I have to make his food and he's doing fine. So I bought more time for Larry. You know. Harry has a heart only for dogs. Yeah. Yeah, only. I know. Well, and that's, that comes back to my point is like, because now I know you don't have, you, you, you know, you don't have kids. Um, no. You probably know plenty of you. You make these relationships with these new green berets or these guys kind of trying to get the green beret. And also you obviously have a, an interaction with the younger generation. 
and me, my daughter turns 18 in December, you know, looking at wow. schools and all. Yeah. And Damn, so, dude. but I don't want her to have to do shit when it, if like, if it ever really got to this point, you know, it's like, you want to always be the one doing the stuff for people. It's supposed to be us. Yeah. And like my parent, like my dad, I mean, you know, you'll probably have the same mentality, but my dad's 74 now. And the guy still thinks he's 21 and it's like, man, that's fine. <laughs> but, you know, and, and but he'll always have that mentality is like, it's just him against the fucking world in the worst case scenario. And I'm like, dad, do you have, hey, do you have, I forgot to ask you, do you have brothers? I have an older brother. He's 40. He'll be, he'll be turning 47 in a few weeks and he's a fucking killer, but he's, the to he would never be in the he's more like you you actually went into the military and i think he'd have been like you if he followed your path but my mm. brother's an artist you know he's very uh he, he does mma he's trained that his whole fucking life but he yeah. never wants anyone to tell him what to do from like the right. military side right right and i told him for, i'm like dude you would have been you would have been really good if you went into the special forces route because he's just one of those yeah. thinkers he's a super smart guy but it was never for him. And he's always like, no, I'm, I'm, I could never be a fucking soldier. I'm like, yeah, well, you also like getting punched in the face, which I don't want it to ever happen to me, right? Like, you're one of those people that actually likes that. And yeah. I don't, like, I've never in any of my times being in a fight, I've never liked being hit, like never once. Clay's the same way. Clay Martin, same as my brother. Like, he's like, you talk to him about a fight. He's like, yeah, I love that shit. I'm like, no. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> it's, I, I don't love it. I, I just accept it as part of it. You know? <laughs> right. It's accepted, but I, I guess. I'm not going to say, yeah, I liked, get, I liked getting kicked in the head and knocked out. <laughs> I've been knocked out by a head kick, and yeah. I woke up. I had no idea what happened. <laughs> no idea what happened, bro. I was doing pretty good, too. <laughs> so, uh, so no shit. I was doing – yeah. But see, that's the controlled environment, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, what's, was, the, yeah. what's the other end if that happens for real? Like, yeah, you're not waking up. You might you might be dead right there on the on the street, right. yo. Yeah, and, and that's always been. I'm one of those people that just, as much as I feel confident, if I have to do something, I'm just like, oh, not right now. I'm not. I don't know if I'm 100 percent ready for this shit. I feel like I just can't, like, man. I can't. Yeah, I'm just like, ah, can't, I got, well, I've, I've yeah, got shit to do tomorrow. Good. Like, <laughs> I've had this discussion with my brother. My brother is a year younger than me. And he was a monster uh, football player in high school. He was an all-state linebacker. Just didn't want to play oh, wow. college. He had chances to play. And he's an artist. He's an art teacher. Yeah. Okay. And his yeah. politics are a lot different than mine. <laughs> so we – and when my dad was alive, God bless my father, because my father and I are pretty much the same. Although my dad was more moderate than me. I'm kind of the more, like, militant, like, you know, <laughs> fucking, yeah, Red Dawn yeah. kind of guy. Yeah. And, but, like – but like my brother's the other other side, and I. But I told my brother, I said, you know, Shap, because I call we, I call him Shap, like I call me. I said, Shap, let me. And he's not against guns because he knows me. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's not. He knows what I've done, and he respects what I've done with my life. But I said, Tom, you know, I I'm not as fast as I used to be. I'm not as dangerous as I used to be. Yep. But I carry a gun because I, I I I see what's going on out there, and so. I don't want to spend my life hoping nothing bad happens. Right, right. I want, to spend, I want to spend my life facing it and going, hey, man, they might get me, but hopefully they're going to have to work for it and I'm not right. going to make it easy. So like I asked my brother one time, I said, hey, dude, let's say it's two o'clock in the morning and you hear the, the windows break downstairs in your house. What are you going to, what are you going to do? Like, do you have a plan for that? Like, what? how are you going to protect your family and stuff? And he's like, no, you're right, man. So I'm getting him to think that way because... I don't understand. You don't have, you don't even have to be good. You just have to be good enough. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and I think that I don't understand how any male, and it's not about being a tough guy. I just don't know how you would, uh, what's the word I want to use sort of turf off or, you know, let someone else take responsibility for your safety because do you, they're not going to be there. Yeah, you want, to, you want to subcontract your safety out to someone. <laughs> subcontract. Yeah, I, I, listen, I'm good. I'm fine. Like I'm, I, I, I have no problem going into Walmart because I just know nothing's gonna happen. Really, I just yeah. so I don't understand. I think that's another reason why there's a big schism in the country because I feel like I do feel like a lot of the people who are kind of anti-gun or anti like I, I don't want to learn how to fight. They're I also anti-police though, aren't they? Yeah. What's that? So, so the well, the ones that don't want you to have the guns or don't think you need them are also the ones who are like, oh, we should only let that be for the police. But yet they right. don't want or the police either. The police. But they're anti-police. The you're saying that only the cops have guns. Like, it's completely schizophrenic. It makes no yeah. sense. Like, 
if the cops are the shittiest dudes on planet Earth and a cab, right? All cops are <laughs> bastards. Yet let's take away guns from the citizens and just leave it to that. Doesn't even it, it doesn't, their it doesn't logic compute. just breaks. It breaks. Yeah. It does. And so I just don't understand how. There's just this, it kind of tied into all the shit we're talking about. It's like your personal responsibility to, to protect. We're protectors. We're very expendable guys. But if you can't even protect yourself or your family or friends and loved ones, then really, are you even fulfilling your job on planet earth? Cause you're just, you're not, you're kind of not. And that's not about being a tough guy. I mean, I carry a gun all the time here in North Carolina and I've never had to pull it because if I pull it, then that means it's, it's someone's dying real close to, right and it's serious yeah. i mean yeah. i've had people talk, say shitty things to me or like you know cut me off in traffic and dude i had some dude road rage on me the other day like in the outer banks and i'm just like laughing going this guy really doesn't know <laughs> well, i will i will kill you is to get it. but i'm just laughing because it's like he's not gonna do anything but like can you imagine if you weren't prepared and you might be nervous like i'm not nervous i'm yeah. prepared that's that's and that's I, that's that's a great, that's a that great, be, I think that be, I think that being constantly nervous and on a deep level, realizing I'm tweeting you that real quick, but What's go ahead. That? I'm going to tweet that real quick from my new account, by the way, since I got, I'll send you it. I got suspended, yeah. but, I uh, think, but no, I'm going to tweet that. That's a great things. saying. You should put that on one of your murder cult churches. I'm not nervous. I'm prepared. Yeah. Well, I, and I also think that, I think that's one of the reasons why a lot of guys are having problems because they do realize on a deep level that they are not prepared. And when you wake up every day knowing that you are not up to the task, that's got to wear on you a little bit. That's got to wear on you. It's got to, it's got to sort of un erode like your self-worth and confidence. And so what they end up doing is lashing out and saying, Oh, you fucking knuckle draggers. No, I'm not. A, well, I, we're knuckle draggers, but you yeah, know what are. I'm saying. But what you what I wanted to say, what you, I wanted to go back to where you started was, you don't have to be, you, you just have to be competent, right? You just have to. You don't have to be good. You got to be good be, enough. Right. But yeah, that's right. You got to be good enough. But to that point, you also shouldn't expect or just assume like when the windows break at 2 a.m. and someone's coming in your door or your glass, wherever, it's probably not you and Joe Kent showing up, right? It's probably not those guys. So don't assume like, you know. The fucking SF dudes are showing up through your door to, to to rob you and break your stuff. So you you may have an advantage just by being a little bit proficient in something you're That's doing. Because right. most yeah. they're counting yeah. on not having a confrontation. I would assume. Like, exactly. If I'm a criminal, it's I don't want to fucking show up to your house. That's going to be a bad a day for me, right? So I'm going to be like, all right, I got to get out of here quicker than I got in here. That's like, right. You know what breaks into a house looking for a fucking gunfight? Do they? I don't no, and I keep I keep by my bed. I have a I have a, a a big frame SIG. It was I didn't buy. It was a gift when I did a show. It's a SIG, SIG forty five. So it's not the 1911 because I know the FUD jokes are coming. But like <laughs> I, have a, I have a big forty five with a fucking surefire on it and and hollow points and I I don't that's there's nothing in the chamber but it's right by my bed. So if you break into my house, you're gonna hear this. You're gonna hear that rack, and I'm just gonna come on up. Come on, up, <laughs> come man. on up. Yeah, that's even worse, right? You got to co like, why would you ever want to go upstairs? Like, that's that's just a tactical disadvantage. And it's, so, and it's not tough, guy. It's just like, holy shit, dude. Yeah. And to your point, most criminals are criminals because they're not willing. They're not willing to put in the work to train at beating. Yeah, right. right. So like, they want like they're predators. So they they want an easy exactly. meal. So if you give them an easy meal, they're going to take it. This is, but that's just great that you're saying this because it goes all it it just ties into everything that we're saying. The type of the type of men who go into what you did or whatever. Maybe there's a bad guy or two in there, right? But for the most part, yeah, there is. Yeah, but sure. for the most part, I mean, there's always going to be bad apples in every bunch of anything. It doesn't matter what, whether it's SF or fucking baseball players or whatever it is. Yeah. A group of people is always going to have bad actors. But 100%. for the most part, those types of people are the ones who are seeking to be protectors, like you said. Or they're, you know, and yeah, it comes down to what, and this is straight out of RCIA class, right? Adam fucked up. He didn't protect his wife from the fucking serpent. And that's why that, this is kind of, I'm paraphrasing what my instructor, the, the the father, I won't say his name. Well, he said, he's like, hey, this is Adam's fault, really. He didn't protect his wife. He's supposed to be a protector and he wasn't. That's a good point. Yeah, right? So, that's good point. We, that's Adam, when you point. and I talk one day, hey, bud. <laughs> Where were you, man? Yeah. 
Where is Adam in the light? Where is Adam in the chain? Of, am I allowed to, you know, talk to him like that? Or he's not really high in the chain of command, is he? Everybody's blaming the slutty broad. It was kind of Adam's. It was fucking fault. Adam's. He didn't protect his wife, and then he blamed her. It was her. Like, it's like, oh, look at you. Look at you, you hoe. Well, where were you, bro? Where yeah. were, you, were you? Were you on? Were you doing PlayStation or were you jerking <laughs> off? Were you watching a game? Where were you? Yeah. What was like? like what the, were you what, doing? That you what just was the, Step in and go, no, don't do that. No, yeah, don't. yeah, yeah. No, hey, have a bite of the apple. When you're done, pass it over to here. Like, like come on, bro. Be yeah. better. Be better. Be better. Yeah, be yeah. Better. don't be sorry. Just be better. Just be better. Right. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of where uh, that's where my head's been at lately because I just feel like there's way too much happening too quickly. And yeah, I tie it into I, – I, I, people don't like to hear this, but I'm like, look, this shit started – at least it feels like it started when Trump got elected one way or the other, whether you like the dude or not from a presidential standpoint, like everything from the far left has just snowballed so quickly, so fast to where we're at, where we are right now. I have a thought on that from a cultural I, standpoint, I would say. I have a thought on that because I was on Gutfeld's show. I've been on there a while, but I, I, uh, I was on Gutfeld's show the month before the 2016 election. Mm -hmm. And uh, we were wrapping up the show and he goes, hey, any any predictions for the election? I said, Trump's going to win. And he looked at me legitimately like I had a dick growing out of my forehead. And and I just the show closed. Fast forward to a month later, Pop was still alive and uh, he'd gone to bed and mom and I were watching the election returns. And it was like I saw all these states. I was flipping between MSNBC and CNN and, and Fox and I was just watching the meltdown. And then he, then he, then Florida went for Trump. It was about 11 o'clock, I think. And I looked over at my mom and I said, quote, I said, he's going to fucking do it. So I texted Greg. I said, I told you hit send within three seconds. He goes, you're coming on Friday. So they flew me right back up there. And, and, you know, and he does his monologue, you know, this is like two days after the election. And he goes, ah, okay, Terry, go ahead and gloat. And I said, I'm not going to gloat. I said, I'm not that smart. I, well, I'll gloat a little bit. I said, the reason, Greg, I I, I predicted that was because I, I have the luxury of not being you. I'm not in a media bubble in New yep. York City where they told you he had 1% chance. I said, I live in North Carolina. I train with working class dudes, cops, everything. I've been filming out in Arizona and Ventura County, California, where it's nothing but ranches and guns and horses. I saw Trump signs everywhere. I saw no... And I said, you know, and I really felt like the American people, and that's changed now. We've had some years to, to beat us down. But like, I think in 2016, there was still a rebellious streak in the country where we were not going to accept the coronation of Hillary because it was her time. So voting for Trump in many cases was a, just a fuck you to the system. It was like, yeah, you know what? I know this guy's an asshole and blah, blah, blah. But you know what? I'm not being, I'm not going to play along with your machine politics. And I just, I saw that. I felt like that was the way it is. The problem was the left really, listen, we've been moving. All we do is move to the left. It's in small increments. We never really, the right never takes ground back. They just never, really, they cede territory, but they never really reclaim it. So it, it may move faster or slower. The problem was when Trump won, they were shocked because it was like, literally, you just, you snatched, you know, victory right out of, right out of her mouth, out of Hillary's mouth. And, you know, that whole phrase, never again. Well, I think the Democrats at that point said to themselves, that is never going to fucking happen again. Never. Okay. Can I give you my conspiracy theory? Again. What? Can I give you my conspiracy theory on the 2016 election? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let me finish. So, yeah, okay, so I ahead. think, yeah, I want I definitely want to hear that. So I think that's what it was, is that, and that's why all they did, and there's, listen, Trump is a very, uh, I mean, and now I, he's, he, to me recently, he's been particularly unimpressive. Like, I just don't, I, I wanted, I, I wanted to see from, I voted for that guy twice, you know, and I, I Man. wanted, I wanted to see with all the shit that he went through, I wanted to see a calmer, more dangerous dude who would just look at the camera and be like this. I got you be a, a cold fucking killer. And instead he's just, he's sort of acting like a petulant child, which he always was, but yeah. he, he didn't, but I, I think, I don't feel like he really learned anything from that. And no, not at all. And more is the pity. I also think DeSantis 
should never have gotten in the election. I remember when I, I agree hundred percent. This is one. This wasn't his time to do it. It wasn't his time. He should have just stayed in Florida, kicked ass in Florida, and exactly. waited for all this. Yep. Fucking storm. To, whether Trump gets elected or not, he should have rode that storm out. And I think DeSantis would have cruised into twenty twenty four. But now he got our twenty twenty eight. I guess. Eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Twenty eight. But, you know, I think DeSantis was wooed by a lot of Republican donors who hate Trump. And they're like, no, yep. you got to stop this. And yeah. I think that was a mistake because I think huge mistake. I don't I don't I think Trump is not has not been impressive, but there is an element. I I, I do want revenge. I would like to I would I would I would like to see Man, vengeance. I got so much. I, got so much I just don't think he's I just I don't so think much he, here. He made but he made so many mistakes like, hey, Trump. You're the one who listened to Fauci. You didn't have to. I mean, you did. I get it because he's supposed to be the disease guy, but they're and they're all fucking they suck. You fired Comey correctly. So and then you appointed Christopher Ray, who's just another version of that. That's on you, bro. Like you did that. Someone advised you, but you did that. You you're sitting there endorsing Lindsey Graham. You 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 put Ronna McDaniel back in charge of the RNC. So so, dude, I, I'm kind of. You're not really learning, man. You're not really, you're not, you're I not mean, learning. You're, you're making the point. I think a lot of people, and I've heard people close to me say this, that, you know, yeah, we can say all those things about why we like Trump, but he's a horrible judgment of character. Like well, he has no idea probably, from the, in terms of picking yeah. people, he picks the worst people and he brags he's, about picking the best the people. Trump is, he's too susceptible to flattery. He's too yeah. susceptible to flattery. And everyone knows that. Everybody knows that. I okay. Mean, he, he, he he was worried about, you know, having like, you know, getting interviews with like Molly Jong Fast, who was never going to fucking give him a fair, but he somehow wants to impress them. Yeah. Anyway, your conspiracy. I want to hear the conspiracy it. theory is we know we know the Clintons and Trump are friends. So we know that you, it's Trump, all throughout Trump, your history. Trump, Trump was a Democrat. Exactly. So my 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 my, you know, what's his name? The the Jones guy, the fucking Alex Jones. Yeah, my Alex Jones. conspiracy. Yeah, my Alex Jones conspiracy was. It was Hillary's time. Trump, you're going to run for president as a Republican. They'll they'll nominate you, and this will guarantee I get elected. Okay. You I'll think do it. so? I'll do it. And then I go back to what you and I talked about the last time you were on is you, you brought up something. I don't know what it was you were saying, but you did, you did kind of mention what I think a lot of people said is like – he was like, oh, shit, I actually won. Now I got to be president. Yeah, I and did say that. And he actually was a pretty good – like you said, he was a really good – president from a conservative side for the most part he did a lot of he good did, things yeah, as, as a far president policy, he was pretty good when the cameras weren't around he did a lot of good shit as an executive i thought as a president right. i it, no one can dispute that i mean they can because they'll do it from an ideological standpoint but from an actual an executive branch like he did a lot of good and it over i think it overshadowed all the bad that he did however now reality's back in play when 2020 comes along right yeah of course they're not letting him get reelected. No way. And there's no, fuck no way. fucking way they will no. ever let him be president again. Never again. Which brings me to my next question, because I actually like this dude. And a lot of the friends that you and I have that are mutual kind of like him, too. And that's RFK Jr. And now he just declared to run as an independent, which is only going to help who? That's going to it's not going to help Trump. Not going to help Trump one fucking bit unless he takes him as Trump. his VP. I Would think Trump do I, that. I, Would Trump be smart and take him as his VP? That'd be the better way to do it. I yeah. think I think RFK is I, I've I've heard I some like of the, the stuff. dude, man. I really well, like him. Yeah. I, I think I think what we're doing, we're so hungry. We're so hungry for people to kind of sort of give us like a like sort of like a sort of common sense thing yeah. that we're actually we're willing to listen to a dude who's pretty he's a pretty far left guy. I mean, he's it's he's Catholic, not a, though. No. Yeah, he's Catholic. He is. I get that, but I don't. He's I don't care. He's got some far left um, leanings, but for the most part, it's what you just said. It's common sense shit, though. There are a lot of a also, lot of he is kind of unless he's changed his mind. Maybe he's changed. He's always been a very anti Second Amendment dude. He was until recently, kind of a you know. My problem with the left <laughs> is that it's interesting. We now have some interesting bedfellows with the left, like Glenn Greenwald, for example. Right? I mean, he's. Glenn Greenwald has, you know, years ago when, when I was full on in the GWAT, I'd have told Glenn Greenwald to shut the fuck up. And now I'm like, huh, huh. But I would like to ask Glenn <laughs> because I think he's, because I think he cares. He's, he seems like a decent guy, but I would also say this to any left-wing person who's, who cares. 
how are you going to implement these things that you believe in without a large government? Because the left automatically, just by by dint of what they say, everything that they want to do is going to involve a bigger government and more coercion. That that you can't have that. You can't have a universal health care without a big government administering and enforcing it. You can't have. You know, if you, you know what I'm saying, like the big thing is like, yeah, it's but our government's happened. grown under both the last two Republican presidents too. Well, well, well that's that's that, that the, the dude, the right. I told my, I told a my space brother, force now. We have a fucking space force now for what? Thank you, Trump. Yeah. Well, I told my brother too because we get. Into, I love my brother. We get into good. Yeah. Thank you, Trump. But I, <laughs> I told my brother. I said, Tom, you know what's going to help you out, and you should do what I did. Free your mind and understand that the party that you think cares about you doesn't give a fuck about you. Years ago, I let go of the idea that the Republicans care about me because they don't. Exactly. Uh, And they're all they really are a big fucking machine that they (laughs) they horse trade our money and then they give it to us and act like benevolent rulers. And I think it it, being in Washington must be a pretty good gig because none of them want to fucking leave. And so I, that's I, I don't know. I don't know how we clean that out because there's just they're not going to relinquish that power and they're all in on it. They're all in on it. What, right. And that's so I, this is my latest joke, I like to say, because, you know, I live in this area now. Like I moved. I, I don't know. how I know you and I've talked a little bit, but I'm not in California. I live in the northern Virginia area. Right. I so thought you're in California, dude. That's it. Yeah. No. So I'll, I mean, I'll, I'll get on the, the, the metro here in D.C. And like there's these huge, massive ads in there for get a master's in government. And I'm like. Who the fuck is teaching it and what right. government are we what what are what is the model we're so ascribing to to like right and i feel like and you were saying this on the last time you were on you were talking about these wesleyan political science grads and i'm just like you know now it's worse than that i mean i i, I i've been here almost a year and i just look around it and, and I, i'm sorry I, I i don't care if you voted for president biden i really don't I, I know in my heart that man is not in charge because he looks like my grandfather before he passed away. Like that's what he looks like. And that's why I feel pity. I won't make fun of the man. I just feel bad for him. I just want him to live the rest of his life in peace somewhere, but they're not going to let him do that. But I look at him and I'm like, not in charge. Harris, absolutely not. Go down the line of secession. None of those people. It's a fucking, bu- we, we, are, we are governed by a massive bureaucracy at this point. That's it. It's, governed it's, by a massive bureaucracy. Our that's who's making the decisions military. that no one even knows. No one has. There's no case to the American people about Ukraine. There's no case to the American people about anything. It's just no. we'll hearken back to some authorization for use of military force from 2001 still, or we'll just do it blindly because yeah. no one's going to give a fuck or really pressure us. And if right. they do, we'll just throw them in fucking jail like all the January 6 people that they pretended was like some fucking massive – attack on democracy because yeah, like, like, like the government feet yeah, on like fucking nancy pelosi's friend. desk you know what fuck nancy pelosi's desk it's a fucking desk this is america we don't give a fuck about symbols we give a fuck about freedom and so like shit like that really fucking irks me man because again i come all the way back let me drink that down a little i don't know who's actually in fucking charge i don't think they know who's in charge well I, all i do know is the country the military our 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 educational system our media it's all run by theater kids and you can't have you yeah, can't but you have were a theater kid and i would love for it to be theater kids more like you but i'm a theater kid who fucking knows how to kill people exactly. so it's like that's my point yeah, so yeah, maybe you'd be a little I'll, more judicious with killing other people because you don't yeah. want to know what it's right right i will i will i will organize the talent show <laughs> and then I'll also go ahead and brief. Will it the be drag queens? Up. And I'll also no, we don't. Well, you know, maybe, maybe, but not for children. Not right, for children. Exactly. Not that is that so hard? Like, why is that? A no, problem? but I think you're right, dude. It's it's such a Byzantine system, and we have all these unelected people making major life life altering decisions for us. And I and it's a good gig because none of them want to get out. They just don't. You don't have get to. Out. Once you're in, you're in. Like, no. there's no, you're not getting fired. Dude, the government during COVID, the government got to decide who was essential and who wasn't. And the government employees never lost a paycheck. Small businesses closed. And by the way, to your point about, you know, January 6th, oh, the sacred, the sacred fucking halls. Fuck you. You know what's more sacred than our fucking capital is the mom and pop business that got burnt to the ground on the BLM riots. Right. That's a symbol of America. And you're just trampling that. Yep. You're trampling that. I don't think that the capital is a good symbol of America anymore based on what you said, because 
those are not, they're so out of touch with us, but it's the people that you run to every day that are having these businesses or running a charity. Those are the people getting stomped. And so like that's sacred and that's been completely fucking swept under the carpet. Fuck you and your capital. Like really dude. And I say that to Republicans and Democrats, you don't deserve, I mean, like, honestly, it's our, basically our government is a fucking cartel. It's a cartel. It's a cartel. And we have to, and they have a lot of power. And so they have a law enforcement division that they don't like you. We'll fucking shut you down. We don't like your business. We'll, we'll shut you down. You have to get this vaccine. We'll fucking fire you. It's a cartel. It's like, Hey, sure. It would be a bummer if you lost your job better play along. It's like you're basically paying for taxes or protection money to the cartel, basically. What was that amendment that made uh, the income tax like mandatory? Let me look that up. I don't know. Well, that, 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 cause that's where I, I'm going with this income tax amendment. Right. So I know it was, I want, I know it was the early 1900s. No, this, the amendment, the fucking Google wants to act like they don't know what I'm asking. Have you been fucking around with this new AI generator shit? Isn't that pretty no. great? <laughs> it's pretty I, I, dude, yeah, all right. 16, the 16th Amendment, 1913, right? Grants Congress the authority, as my extreme, grants Congress the authority to issue an income tax without having to determine it based on population, right? So this was the moment in 1913, 112 years ago, 111 years ago, that made it all mandatory. Yep. And then what, what was the next tax that came out of that? It was the Social Security that you get no to say in. Yeah, that worked out great. So basically when people and, – and this is what's kind of a big – because it's, it's always funny. It's it's, it's usually this, the, the newest generation who enters the workforce, and they're like, oh, man, I got hired to make $63,000 right out of college. It's like, ah, sure you actually, 75%. Do that first, sure and then we'll – give or take, go from 75%. Yeah, no, you did. Oh, you did. Taxes. You're not making that. You're not making that. That is wild to me that – because, look, I get it. I understand what taxes are intended to go pay for, right? A national defense. Sure. Really, I would prefer a national offense. You know, defense is one thing. Remember, we used to actually be the secretary – like, it used to be the secretary of war, and then it of became war. the secretary of defense. Give me a, What secretary are we defending? Secretary of war, I would take seriously. I'd be like, yeah. Fucking yeah, go. we're going to go crush them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but like, why do we even have, it's not in the constitution. Why do we have a department of education? I think it, that came on board in 1973. And if you track our test scores since then, they have, they, they only get worse. So basically when a, when you send money to the federal government for education, by the time for it comes anything. back to you, that dollar has been picked apart and maybe you're getting 60 cents. It's way more efficient to keep it in the States, but they don't do that because the federal government, the richest people in the country are where you live right now. I know. No, you're right. Silicon Valley, but I'm changing. trying to, I make good money doing what I do now. Anywhere yeah. else in this country, I'd make good money. Here? Yeah. What am I here? We'll talk offline about what I'm here, but like, it's like, come yeah. on, man. Like, yeah. you, it, I, I thought where I left was fucking expensive. In California no, no, no. and Napa. In, no, 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 dude. Yeah. And, and, and it's not just like a neighborhood here, a, a block here. It's it's every fucking town around it. Dude, like, you're at the top. How are you're all the of these houses? These are like they're not, even, not even a million dollar home. These are fucking the five, trough, six, bro. seven million dollar homes, man. Like You're in the trough. I, if I'm going to be in the trough, I want to fucking eat. <laughs> right? Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that just is so – I wrote this as well. and Okay, so let me – all right, because you brought up DeSantis, and I know the last time we talked, we were talking about Newsom because he was in the middle of that recall, and he's he survived it, and now he's his, his, political, his political star has been elevated, in my opinion. And now I really would love to understand because I've been seeing the ads for it. We get bombarded with it. Fox News. Thank you, Sean Hannity. Most – whatever. Um and I understand the Newsom appeal. I, mean, I, I do want to get your take. Let me get your take on this first and then ask you the, the follow-up to it, which is where I was going to go originally. But so my, my cousin lives here in, in D.C. He's lived here forever. I'll hang out with him and his husband. See, I'm very I'm very cosmopolitan, Terry. Um, <laughs> so we'll hang out a lot. And I, I love hanging out with them. They're great dudes. Um, but they got a lot of obviously liberal friends. And those people 
from them, this is them relaying it to me when they bring up Gavin Newsom. Nobody likes him. He doesn't play well outside of California. They don't like the way he talks with his hands. He's very – he doesn't look – He's he like a soap opera star. Right, but he doesn't play outside. So do you think – that's like a real thing on this. Like they don't actually, he's not really electable Dude, maybe or on a national scale or what? I don't know. I, I thought, I thought when Joe Biden said on a black radio show, if you don't vote for me, you ain't oh, yeah. black. I, I thought he'd get hammered. And guess what? Blacks voted for him in mass. Oh yeah. You ain't so black you can, man, brother. Yeah. And then, and then remember he said with the whole, he's like, he was talking about Romney. He was, Hey, he's going to put you, put y'all back in chains. Yeah, that was when he was running as VP. Yeah. Right? So well, I mean, like a lot of it, that's more a reflection of the people in this country don't really pay attention. Yeah, they just vote for who that who you tell whatever the to. letter is, right? Whatever the capital yeah. letter is. Yeah. yeah, that it's just like so. I don't know though. It put this way, I think I think there's people in the in in the in the Democrat Party, and I, I I'm the same way. I mean, I can't think of a Democrat I would vote for because not because they have a D, but because I'm not gonna. I can't take. I will not take national security advice from someone who just has an open border. I will not take I will not take public health care advice from someone who's who who claims there's more than two biological sexes. I just can't I won't, I can't take you seriously. No. I won't take I won't take national defense on stuff when you you know what I'm saying like if you have that kind of bad judgment then you don't get to decide my future. And you know we were, I, it's something about like the whole thing about the whole uh college, like there's all these uh, uprisings in college about like you know for yeah. the Palestinians and everyone's like, oh, there's such an anti-Semitic uh, vibe at college. I don't think it's really necessarily so much anti-Semitic as it is colleges for decades are, are being taught. The people in college are taught to – It's what we're doing is incentivizing and monetizing victimhood, real or imagined. And yeah. so what they're saying is without even thinking about it, they're just assuming, oh, the Palestinians live in an apartheid situation, so down with Israel. It, it, I mean, dude, half those dudes are probably dating Jewish girls. And by the way, a lot of Jewish people voted for the Dems who were saying this. So it's not, it's less about anti-Semitism, anti-Black, anti-whatever. It's more about an embrace of cultural Marxism that actually has to do with putting together a coalition of victim groups. If I was a Black person, I'd be pretty pissed off listening to trans people say that there's they're they're in a, they're in a civil rights uh, uh, struggle the same way blacks were. Are you fucking kidding? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's kind of. A I have not seen any face. gay only drinking yeah. fountains. I have not yeah. seen fucking German shepherds or uh, fire hoses being sprayed at gay people. Matter of fact, in many no mass uh, lynchings, none of this shit. No yeah. mass lynchings. So it's like I would be pretty offended if I was a black dude and listening to this gay person say, "Oh no, no, we're this, we're the same." We're, we're, we're in, no, you're not. You didn't even go through what the black people went through in the country. I, so, no. but it's, but it's, it's cool and it is hip and it is validating to either be a victim or to identify with the victims group. So then you have white college kids are literally being taught on campus that they have to hate themselves and they have to actually eliminate themselves to prove that they are morally good people. But that's why I said, I feel like this is all, this is, this is like floor or pedal to the floor under Trump. Like it's it is, no, you're totally control. right. You're totally right. It was always a slow, it was always the slow frog in the uh, cooking the frog in the thing. But when he won in 2016, the, the mask came off and they're like, oh whoa, whoa, wait a minute. And we can't have that anymore. And so they just now they're marshalling their forces that they've been slowly putting into place in entertainment and in yeah. and, and, in education, in the military, and government, everywhere, basically. And now they're just pushing all that forks. It's like, fuck it, it's it's a blitz. Because now they've kind of tipped that, well, not kind of, they've definitely tipped their hand. And I think it's 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 so obvious. Once you see it, like even my mom, you know, my mom is not a, my mom's, my mom's was never politically savvy. She's very conservative, you know, like yeah. old school Catholic. But like I even told her one time she was watching, she likes to watch David Muir at the end of the day on ABC News. Okay. Now, during that day, Joe Biden, he had done something ridiculously stupid. Like he said something so fucked up and was so fucked up. And on the David Muir thing, they had like five minute segment on Trump and they didn't mention Biden once. And I pointed it out to my mom. I said, do you see what they're not showing? And she goes, you know, I never really thought about that because they just they're they're picking and like the media uh, to me are the people I hate the most because but how you they know better. Because like like Dems are gonna Dem, Republicans are gonna Republic, 
and you know <laughs> criminals are going to criminal but like the media once they pick the media is in on this like they're not even curious like and it, it, they're even they're leaving shit out or they're absolutely lying like i get it you, it's okay i don't expect a media person to be completely objective you're not an automaton you're not a robot you have to have your own personal view i get that that's okay but when you look at the camera and absolutely lie or just completely don't even talk about something that's pretty important you're now complicit in it and you know our 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 founding fathers if you go back to like our colonial times Holy shit, like the, the the insults they would hurl at each other, like the disdain even the leaders would have, but they had it, they knew they had to let them exist. They're completely in on it. They're completely in on it. So like the news that people get is just not it's I don't I, I it'll never be fully objective, but now it's com it's Pravda now. It's it's completely Pravda. It's it's really bad. And that's like that's supposed to be like sort of the front line of like you know, sort of giving you, giving you sort of the story. You can lean left or right. I, I'm not going to expect you not to, but we're way past that. I mean, it's, oh, it's yeah. like, yeah. yeah, we're way past that. So, okay. The, the, tie that back in the news. Why are we getting a, oh, yeah, I got, I'm sorry. We were talking about Gavin Newsom. I'm, I'm oh, but no, you're right. But either way, like, why are we getting a, it's scheduled. It's happening. It's already planned it's being promoted yeah. and everything. November 30th, governor DeSantis, Versus Governor Newsom in a debate. Why? Oh, they already have that planned? It's been planned for a while. Yes. Uh, yeah, dude, this just goes for to show. What? They're not running for president. Like, one of them actually is running for president. But why the fuck are they debating? And why is this being broadcast as something that people need to pay attention to? Why is that a thing? Is this yeah. like the actual election that we don't know about? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just don't see how... I don't. I just don't see how you could objectively look at California's performance and say the guy who did that should run the country. Like I just don't. Like you could take issue with some of the things DeSantis has done. You could take issue with any, but like California is an absolute mess. And you, you're, you're from there, right? I'm not from there. I lived the last seven years there. Now yeah, I moved. You, yeah, but I spent the last seven years out there. It's it's hard to find a more beautiful state, but it's also right. Hard. Yeah. Yeah it's hard to find a more badly managed place. And it's like, it's collapsing it's, in real it's, time. And, it's and ran like, by the people in cities. Yeah. Like, I, I, I mean, I've, we, we talked about this last time, but I mean, like if, if anyone's ever been to California, most people have either probably only been to LA, Hollywood, right. all that bullshit, or probably San Francisco. Maybe San Francisco. Yeah. That's it. That is not that state, man. Maybe no, San Diego. No. San Diego's at least from a state, and I know they're slowly shifting, and I think maybe they have a fucking Democrat governor or mayor now. But either yeah, way, San Diego used to be a bit of a holdout, you know, because yeah. a lot of military because people. A lot like, of mil yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Dude, my state, North Carolina, is you not. Are, you guys are shifting. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Guys it's purple, and and the thing is too, it's all because of a migration of people from up north. And, you yeah. know, California has done this to Arizona and Colorado. And here's the funny thing. The people fleeing these places are smart enough and mercenary enough to realize that their quality of life is not commensurate with what they're paying, right? Yet they're not humble enough or self-aware enough to realize and change the politics that got them there that caused them yeah. to flee. So they take those politics and they bring them here. I've talked to a bunch of different people come down here because I, dude, I'm originally from New York city. Yep. I tell, like I bought, I bought my truck a couple years ago. I had to get a truck. Long story. My, I was in my dad's car after he died and it got total. So I had to, I had to get a truck. I was getting ready to go film. It was hard to find a truck. And this is at this place in Raw, at least Toyota, nice people. But the dude selling it to me was, he, I, he was clearly from New York. I said, where are you from in New York? And he goes, Oh, you can, I said, yeah, I could tell where he goes oh, I'm from Brooklyn, blah, 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 blah. And he was, I said, how do you like it here? He's like, he was complaining about North Carolina and slagging on North Carolina. I said, then why the fuck are you here, bro? Like, <laughs> so, so I, I mean, I, I've told people moving here, I said, do me a favor. If you're not going to come and assimilate, then just don't bring your Yankee bullshit here. And I say that as a transplanted Yankee yeah, who went to yeah. college here and, and now I'm, I'm never going to live in New York. Yeah. But that's the problem is that people are leaving these areas because they're dangerous, they're expensive, and they're just falling apart. So they're smart enough to adapt to that, but they're not aware enough or humble enough to go, you know what? I'm going to leave there and I'm not going to take that with me. So now you've turned Arizona into that. You've turned Colorado. 
North Carolina is that. It's just, you well, know. Texas isn't. I mean, we, we said Texas, this. Texas cracks me up. Oh, yeah. yeah. Texas is Texas is going to go, man. Wow, gonna bro. Go. Well, once, that, then that's why I've said before, once Texas is gone, there's no path to the presidency for a Republican. You're right. You're right. You're right. And by the way, that's 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 what they have. Like turn Texas blue. They they yeah. the Democrats, they are. You got all everyone's like, Democrats oh, Austin, have... Austin's great. Yeah, Austin. You know what? You can Austin's great all you want, but you know what they're doing? They're packing it full of Democrat voters. Of course they are, willfully. But they yeah. they the Democrats are always playing. Like I said, the right constantly cedes territory and does not ever take it back. Even when right. they, yeah. even, even when they get into power, they don't. They don't sit there yeah. and, and crush their enemies yeah, like this. Like, like, you know what? How about everyone in these red states start moving to the fucking smaller ones? You're going to have to play the long game if you want to keep this as an actual, <laughs> like, republic that's together. Because otherwise, I mean, you can't keep relying on Arkansas on their three electoral fucking votes. No. You know, you no. have to grow these population bases in other states. And if you're not going to yeah, do North it. Yeah, North Carolina's done. We're done. Oh, we, used yeah. to, we used to be red. No. Raleigh, Charlotte, and Asheville are all fucking deep blue. Well, Asheville, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, that's all hippies now. Yeah, and yeah. beer manufacturers. They make beer. Yes, they have great craft beer. And lots meat. of breweries. Good meaderies. Meaderies. Yep, meaderies. Lots of mead. Lots of honey I'm alcohol. Fan of mead. I'm a big fan of mead. So I don't know, man. I guess, you know, it, it seems pretty depressing. All I, you know, I, I try to, you know, I think the best thing we can do I have to go in a little bit, but uh, no, I understand. I, was it really two years that we spoke? Is it that long ago? September of twenty one. Yeah, it was right after the Afghanistan withdrawal. God damn, bro! It really doesn't seem that long ago. But what do you? What did you think about that? Like, cause I didn't. I mean, this happened after you were on, but remember, so we had the Afghanistan withdrawal. Like, we know what that was, failure, right? But what? 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 What did you think about like? Yeah, we we uh we we got the people responsible where they killed those ten civilians, and then like a week yeah, later, they're like, them. and then the yeah. week later they're like, uh, they actually didn't have anything to do with it. Uh, gotta go, enjoy your weekend, and that was yeah. it. Billy Milly comes out and goes, oh, it was a it was a justified kill, and everyone's like, no, it's not. That guy yeah. Millie, by the way, oh my he god, retired, so he's gone now. Now we can we can unload for real, and I know you you I have load a, up. I can you have load a, load a, I'm not in the military. Yeah, well, like, no, but. He was an yeah. SF dude, so and I, I used to have a ton uh, of respect you know, for him. I I, I used question. to sit in his IJC briefs when he was a three star in Afghanistan. I used to love listening to him talk. He was great. And then I don't know what fucking happened. But because it's careerism, it's careerism. They don't. They're not. The dude was I, the- I, my 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 burning disdain for our for our general officers across the services is I can't even tell you how much I hate these people because well, you can actually go for it. Yeah, well, I, yeah, I, I I can't articulate how much I hate them because they've they've destroyed these institutions for for what a seat at Raytheon for a golf membership for fucking to come on a, a, a news network and talk to to be able I mean like honestly they're they're the most they're the most wretched people. And you know, you know, bothers me about Millie too. Even when I saw him when, when, when he was with Trump, I said, how is this fat motherfucker walking down the street with Trump? You're a fat fuck. Like if you're going to have an SF tab and you're active duty, you should you see his, you like should that. See his, you should see his portrait, bro. He's not fat in his portrait. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. He's got like, Instagram he looks like going. you in his portrait, bro. Like, yeah. <laughs> like right off the bat. I, I cannot, I will not, I will not pay attention to a fat officer. Cause I'm like, dude, cause you clearly, you've already skirted the rules. Cause yeah. you, you can't, if you're going to stay in your career and look like a fucking rubber ball, then you are, you're obviously violating all the things that yeah, I would we love have to see. I would love to see that ACFT score. Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't pencil whipped at all. Yeah. Was it? As much as I dislike, because I feel the same way about retired Sergeant Major of the Army, Grinston, I can't stand that fucker. But at no, least yeah. I know he legit did his ACFT. But like, he's fit, he, and he still, he, he, part, right? he still looked the yeah, part, right? He still looked the part. He's fit. Like, he's, yeah. he's a fit guy. Like, he's he drank the Kool-Aid, and he's one of yeah. these blah, blah, blah. Like, I hate all of them, dude. I hate yeah, all of them. Yeah. yeah. I hate all of them. I do. I, I can't stand these people because they're just – they don't they, – they don't really – Whatever they did, you know, and the thing in the military too, it's not what you, and I used to say this when I was in group, you know, because you'd see guys that kind of let themselves go and they'd be, they'd be get, they'd get fat or they'd get a bad attitude and they'd always kind of talk about what they used to do. And I'm like, dude, it doesn't matter what you were, it's what you are. And if you're still in, 
and you're still in a position of being an, a, a green beret or a fucking infantry guy or something like that or whatever, it doesn't matter what you were. It's what you are. And so now you're just a fat talking mouthpiece. You're a careerist. And I just, oh, God, man, I don't even know how to fix that. I, I do. The Army is just – I hate the Army, actually. I do. I hate the Army. But see, I hate it. Yeah, I always said that. I said the army is the army is big gay. G H E Y. It's so yeah, bad. Right. And we used to always even laugh about all the army stuff, like army values. I'm like, what, what did you always talking? feel separate by being like doing what you did from the SF side? Do you guys always feel separate from the actual big army? We did. We, yeah. I don't think that's the case anymore. There was a lot of crossover and careerist officers and actually high level fucking NCOs like sergeant majors that towed that line. And so I think it was a mistake, actually. I, I would say it might, I could even say it was a mistake to make SF an official branch because before we made it a branch, if an officer came over to SF, SF being special forces, that was a career ender for them. They would never, at that point in their career, they were done. The highest they could probably get would be Colonel, which is in charge of a group. And back then there was not wasn't even as many groups. So if you, if you just, you wanted basically, if you went to SF and you were an officer, you wanted to be a green beret more than you wanted to be a career officer. And so that was different. I think what happens then is you get these guys come in, they get their tab, guys like Millie, and then they move out. Yeah, and they're like, oh, I'm, I was an SF guy, and look at this. Uh, yeah, okay, well, it's a same tab. with the fucking Rangers, right? Everything, no. all of it. We just had the first Space Force Guardian graduate Ranger school. Which, I saw that. I yeah, saw that. Hey, what's the fucking point? And now, like, so Ranger school has legitimately become the Airborne Wings. Like anybody can get them. You just got to go to the school. Yeah. I went to Ranger school. Mean and it was awful it was terrible it yeah was... i remember you said you were a ranger yeah it sounded like you probably actually went when it was a it was i was just shit it was just an awful time there's nothing nothing and we still had the desert phase which was in dahlonega and i was in the winter i don't think i've ever been that cold in my life <laughs> and i worked in the arctic when i was in 10th group so it's like i was just so miserable man but it was you know, it's ranger school is Ranger school is supposed to be a gut check. It's a leadership school, right? You're yeah. supposed to, supposed to yeah, are you cold, hungry, tired? Can you run the patrol? Can, and can you be a good patrol member too? Like you're not a spotlight guy. Yeah. That's what it is. That's all it is. It's yeah. a gut check. It's a gut check. All of it's a gut check. And so but, it's the way you feel about and this, I mean, this really ties everything back to where we started is just, we have no faith in institutions anymore. We know that. You're right. That's true. So, that, and, and and we're not talking i don't i can't i don't know anything about the fucking marines the air force i mean i just know what i know from dealing with them um right. i would say the only branch i still have any modicum of respect for from a standards and discipline standpoint because i've witnessed it fairly recently is the coast guard they still take their shit serious coast yeah, guard right still and, and you know it's so funny because we because we mock the coasties but, we, but yeah we shouldn't they still take we their should, fucking, actually, and those do those cats do real work every day yeah you know? they they take they, they um so yeah so you said you don't know how you fix it, but you know, but you just got to collapse. Other, well, it's like so, how we got to fix something, man. Like we got to do something. Well, you said what you, what you just said is is critical, and it is a loss of credibility and faith in in heretofore yeah. respected institutions. And I think that was by design because I think that's you know, like think about this way. Now, I grew up. I had fa I had cops in my family, NYPD guys. I used yeah. to look up to these dudes. They would tell yep. stories. One of the guys, he died a few years ago. He grew up with my fa my dad in the Bronx. He was a, a Navy frogman. And when he got out, he was a, he was a NY, he was a cop and he worked in the Harbor unit. He was diving in the East river for bodies and shit. And he was a oh, crazy shit. cop. Dude, he was my hero. I'd walk into his house and I could smell the rubber from the wetsuits and the fins. <laughs> and I was, and, but like the stories back then too, you know, cops had fucking tune you up because yeah, like, yeah, yeah. the streets were safer. They were they, absolutely. And like now, you know, like I was always taught that, you know, the FBI are the good guys and that, you know, they're, they're some, no, they're not the good guys. And, you know, you're supposed to be taught that the military is a, uh, it's egalitarian. What's the word? A, uh, uh, a meritocracy. Thank you. Oh my God, dude. Yeah. Brain injury. So a meritocracy, <laughs> right? Cause it's, and there's, there's always a little bit of politics in that, but generally, especially in the combat arms, if you, you can't do the rock. You can't shoot that gun. You're not going to, you know, you're not going to get promoted. Yeah. That's all gone away now. So like, and our, it, even the church, the Catholic church has all these institutions 
that that many of us believed in, in 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 greater degrees or other, whether it's the educational institution, whether it's your church, the military, law enforcement, the government, if you, if that was a thing, all of those have lost credibility with the people. And the only way that they can function now is to fucking come down on you with raw naked power because we don't respect them. I don't respect the FBI, but I'm afraid of the FBI because of what they can do to me. And that's not, you can't have a country like that. Yeah. You can't have a country where like, you know, like now I look at even regular cops. Like I do, I there's cool cops here where I live and they all know me. Like they know what I, they know me because my background, they, some of them see me on TV and we're all really cool and they're good guys. I'll deal with cops now as individuals, right? Instead, I don't look at the institution anymore as this like this like shining institution because it's it's an institution that has been corrupted. And so if you're a cop and you're working for a government that is tyrannical and oppressive, then you're an instrument of that. Whether you're a good cop or not, you know, like and there's no way around that. And they've lost I remember years ago I was on Fox and I said this is when this crazy FBI shit. I looked right at the camera. I was like I'm going to get in trouble for this. But I was like, cause, and it, we, we, it was during COVID, so I had to do it remotely from a studio in Raleigh, which is a terrible way to do it because the laptop he had wasn't in sync. So all I did, I did the Gutfeld show looking at a black hole in a camera. And I, could <laughs> hear, I, could hear, I could hear Kat and Tyrus and Greg, but I couldn't see anything, which is really bad. <laughs> but I remember saying, I said, hey, guys, if there's, I, I keep hearing that, you know, most FBI agents are good, the ground guys. I said, I don't believe that anymore. Sorry. You've proven that not right. So if there's anybody in the FBI that wants to pull your institution's reputation out of the toilet, that'd be a good time to do it because you've lost me. You've lost the people who heretofore respected you and were taught to, to like, uh, the, the left always hated you. Now they use you. So the left used to rally against the man. And yeah, yeah. And now the man. Fucking, yeah right, right. Isn't that so, so weird? Hate, well, it's power. So the left used to like, you know, argue about overreaching of our intel and our law enforcement and our military and you know back then i'd be like shut up now i'm like eh, you probably had a point but now what's happened is all those demonstrators in the 60s they did they weren't against the war in vietnam they hated the u.s because they love war now right like, they love, it doesn't make any they it doesn't make, they make love, it make they sense sending, terry they, make it make sense sending, they love sending people overseas to kill other people. But back then it was because they wanted to take down America. Those people, those college kids demonstrating and spitting on Vietnam vets, they run corporations, they run educational systems, and they run the government. They're in charge now. They are the man. They used to rally against the man. They have become the man. And they are never going to, they are never going to willingly walk away from that power. They're just not going to do it. Not gonna, they're not going to do it. So what's next? We need Genghis Khan. That's what's, what next? I need. I... what's next? I don't know. Got no answer for you. A guy like Joe Kent will never get probably elected to president because he's too honest. He's too, he's too good. Can you believe he's he too- did it? Like, I, like, to, like, look, people can talk about like elections are rigged and, you know, favorite president we just talked about. I mean, I'm going to assume during your many years in Iraq, you probably had to at least either respond or be somewhat aware of an election going on in Iraq. Yes. Is that fair to yeah. say? Yeah. 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 Were you, com- were, you conf- were you confident in the results of a country the size of Iraq being legit? Were you confident? I don't know. So with that being said now, and, 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 and then this is my come to Jesus moment. Because I was over there for elections in Afghanistan in 2013. Oh, shit. And so I know how much of a problem that can be. Yeah. And all that time up until maybe that point, I had probably already started to shift a little bit. But, I mean, I was a super fucking left-wing little liberal fuck before I went into Iraq in 2003. Like, Really? Oh, yeah. My brother and I are the same way. But yeah, we're super liberal. My parents were always conservative. Well, they were Democrats until so they moved to Florida. But, you know, Democrats back then were different. You probably know you. They were, from New Jer- they were from New Jersey. So like the Democrats from Jersey and New York from the 70s, 80s and very different from today. No, not the, they're like they're like sort of working class Democrats. It, that, right. And now they're as conservative as it gets. Brothers the same way. But he's pretty moderate on a lot of shit. But I'm I'm definitely far more conservative. But that shifted all when I was in Iraq after 0304. Like the light came on. You know why though? Let me say this. And I want to get back to it. You know why that all shifted? Because you were steeped 
steeped in a, a, a fucking vat of reality. Yeah. And that's the thing. When you become steeped in reality, combat is the ultimate reality. And so all the political constructs, the social constructs, political correctness, gender queer shit, racial shit, blah, blah, blah. All that is, it's, all that falls away in combat. And so, I, you know, there are left-wing guys in the combat arms, but they're very rare and they're kind of looked at as weirdos. Like, we're not a monolithic group, but most dudes in our line of work, not that they're Republican, but they definitely tend to be more freedom-loving and they want to be they want to be left alone and do your own thing because you 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 sir were dipped in the vat of reality and so once the, you get dipped in that reality vat you really don't go back you don't yeah and that was the shift but then like i always up until the point in afghanistan i used to take elections as like uh, there was a moment where I remember getting all these briefings about we have to make sure like everything's secure and then and, and the votes are able to be properly counted. And all, up until that point, I was always like, wait a minute. So we're the only ones that do it right? Really? Really? Are we? Are we? Are we the only ones that do it right? Because then and then you start really breaking it down and it's like, OK. I already gave you my election conspiracy of 2016. All right. So then ah, when they me. realized they couldn't control the variable, now we'll just control the outcome. Yeah. And then and like, I'm not a guy from 2020 who will sit here and be like, oh yeah, that fucking thing's rigged. But I will say it from the Joe Kent standpoint, you're trying to tell me that Joe Kent was able to unseat a 12 year incumbent from his own party but loses the actual general election by half a, less less than half a point. Hey. So wait really? a minute. So yeah, really? so wait a minute. Really? Unseats the person who has a like just choking the fuck out of that seat. You can't win it. It's a Republican district. Gets them out. And he won. All, yeah. and, and and wait a minute. So how did Oh, he was a Trump supporter. Oh. Oh, he was a he was America first guy. Oh, yeah. Sorry. So yeah, maybe we need to try and, and and then Trump, you know, his big thing on that election was to talk about all the candidates he was endorsing that were going to have big wins. And those big wins really didn't happen. That's well, interesting. You know what happened, but, but that's interesting, Trump though, right? So all the people who were supposed to win just did they just they just didn't win. And yeah, remember, don't forget, President Biden got eighty one million. Votes most the popular, most popular popular ever. President ever. A guy who couldn't get higher than fourth place in his own fucking primary. That he everyone just drop magically out. dropped out because actually, you know what? President Biden's our best bet. No, I have the whole thing. I said this, I said this on Fox when 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 they announced Biden. I said, listen, here's what this is. Joe Biden was always the throwaway candidate because. Everybody knew he was an idiot. Dude, he got he got he had a drop out of, of a presidential race in like I think it's Harris 19. fucking shredded him about being a racist. Like just well, no, but in annihilated him got, on in one of the primaries. In 1980, he got caught plagiarizing. And so he was like, he Joe Biden was always a low intelligence, glad handing used car politician guy. And he was and he was never he was never a talented guy at all. But the the reason they ran him against Trump, if you go back to it. As much shit where they were throwing at Trump, we were not engaged in any more foreign wars. Remember, like, like, and he and they yeah. tried to bait him. A, Iran shoots thing. down a drone, things, Trump, and everybody right. was saying, "Trump, you got to go take this out." And he's like, "Yeah, it's just a piece of equipment." And then what does he do later? He fucking whacks Soleimani in Iraq, and our own Democrat and he politicians. The American like, flag. It was amazing. But our own our own American politicians, Democrats, are like, "Oh, that's an illegal assassination." No, no, Bernie Sanders. It's an enemy combatant commander. We can kill him if he's in Venezuela. But <laughs> so, so, but but so Joe Biden, Donald Trump, as much shit as he was 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 going through, the economy was humming. Shit was going good. He had he and, was a and good he executive. Just, he was a, he was a good executive. And he just came through the impeachment, and it all fell apart. Remember all that Russia shit. And if you remember, this is right as COVID was hitting our shores. Pelosi, after that failed impeachment, and all that all went to shit. She's like, "Well, we're just going to do it again." So they were already. Th it's very hard to unseat an incumbent president who's got any Republican or Democrat 
a first term president who's got an economy and, and national security shit going like that. They knew that. So what they did was we're just going to have to he's going to win. Uh, so we'll just keep trying to kill him with a thousand cuts with impeachments. And we don't want to sacrifice an up and coming Democrat player, because when you lose a presidential election, you're kind of done. Yep. So we'll throw in Biden. He's a throwaway candidate. It doesn't even matter. And so, but then COVID hit and they all went like this. The light bulbs went off. They're like, so they used COVID. They hid mm -hmm. him for safety reasons. They sent out while the Republicans were basking in the adulation of all these uh, rallies that you couldn't even get, it, get into. Democrats were sending lawyers to activist judges in, king, in key swing states and changed election law, which is unconstitutional, but they did it. All in name of COVID. My mom and dad, before that election, Dad was sick then. He died right, be right, right before the election. He died. My mom and dad got three sets of unrequested mail-in ballots in North Carolina. Yeah, we talked. Yep, isn't that nuts? So, my, my, well, what I'm saying is, while the while the Republicans, because they suck, were fucking thinking we got this, the Democrats went to war, and they're like, because they said never again. So they made sure that these swing states changed their election law. Do you think if the Republicans, if the Dems were winning? Like I think it was in, was it in Georgia, or somewhere? We're like at like two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. All the machine broke or a pipe broke, and Trump was up by fifty grand, fifty thousand. They stopped counting, and three hours later, Biden's up by fifty. Whatever the numbers were, yeah. if that had happened one time, American cities would have burned. Yeah. And the Democrats used Antifa and Black Lives Matter as street soldiers to enforce their bullshit, and so that's how. The big problem the Republicans made was focusing on the Dominion machines. That I mean, whatever. They're fucked up. They're not fucked up. It was the effort to get judges to change election law, and they did it. And they're going to do it again. So, like, I almost feel like all this stuff about DeSantis, Trump, oh, Vivek Ramaswamy, oh, what about – it's kind of a moot point if we're going to have the same kind of election in, two, in 2024 where – Mail-in ballots are – someone just sent out. They got like three mail-in ballots already. No one's asked for them. And so, it, it you know, they're, they're, you're not going to have to have a, a return address. Signatures don't have to match, blah, 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 blah. We're not a COVID. serious country, man. We're just not. Yeah. We're yeah. not. By the way, Ronna McDaniel was presiding over the RNC, and, and Trump endorsed her again. Yeah. So, so I, I got no sympathy for you, bro. No, yeah. No well, did you see that interview on Tucker with – um? Well, since he's gone to Twitter, but the interview with former Capitol Police Chief Stephen Sun. I haven't you, seen that, no. You should watch that one just when you're bored. Um, but it, he, re yeah. he recounts everything about what was going on during January 6th. And essentially the woman in charge who stopped him from basically doing anything to actually possibly secure the Capitol was Nancy Pelosi. And then like Pelosi. two days later, he she relieved him. Yeah. And by the way, where is the curious truth-telling media on this? Like – like, I get it. You don't like Trump, but I think that's a big Is story. Like, yeah, well, it's the same just with the media in general. Like, it, it's not that long ago, man. Like, look how CNN got its name. In your war where you got me my freedom is where CNN right. earned its credibility, right? That's right. Like, and James Earl, this, this is CNN. This is you know, CNN. Yeah, like, that was a great movie. I actually told Julio to watch that one. I'm trying to remember the name of the movie because um, Michael Michael Keaton's in it where he plays the the reporter from CNN. Um, and they go up and that's where he basically establishes all of CNN's credibility. And, and, oh, and I haven't seen that. hold on, let me but tell you, know, you what he's been bullshit for even people like to think, well, we got to go back to Walter Cronkite. Walter Cronkite was a fucking avowed leftist who lied on national television. Yeah. Live from Baghdad, 2002. What's go watch it. Live from Baghdad, 2002. Go watch that. You'll love that movie. But that's, oh, it's that's basically crazy. how, yeah, no, but go ahead. I need to see that. But you should. Anyways, the media has been shitty since then. So it's like, I, I remember so, there was some ad like, we're going to go back to, you know, good old traditional news like Walter Cronkite. I'm like, Walter Cronkite lied. He lied all the time. He was a leftist. So this isn't, this isn't a new problem. But like you said, it has, it has been exponentially pushed faster because I think, I think for a while the Dems smelled blood and it's like, this is the time to strike. We could do the slow cook, but they don't have a lot of patience and they just want to make it happen now. And, you know, these dumb gun-toting rednecks like me and you, we're in the way because we're like, yeah, no, I'm not what's, lying. What's, let me, okay, so what's the end game? Because this reminds me of a Joe Rogan – and it, I think it was actually 2016 before Trump won. It was like his special from 2016, his stand-up. 
if you go back and watch, it's actually pretty good. And it's pretty prescient. The stuff he talks about is actually pretty amazing. And I don't think he was a Trump fan by any, any stretch no, of imagination. No, he's not. Yeah. No, he's but not. at the time, like he was very honest. He was just like, the idea of the president is dumb. You're trying to tell me one guy is in charge of 300 million people? That's just fucking dumb. And then I really broke that. Like, I, I, because yeah, of course, I, I, you know, you laugh at it, right? It's funny. But then, like, okay, think about that. And then I think about living in California the last seven years. And I just think about driving across this country in the winter, three years in a row from the West to the East Coast. I know how fucking vast this country is. I know how dispersed it is. I know how, yeah, honestly, how fucking scary the terrain is at times. I know how just displaced most people are from what I'm looking at right now, which is the fucking, like, I see the fucking Pentagon from my fucking balcony. I'm looking right at it. That's crazy. I'm looking right at it. I'll send you a picture. Um, but this is, this isn't the real United States, man. Yeah, no. And so that like to Joe Rogan's point, he's right. Like, I don't think most people in this country care about anything about anything more than their own individual struggle from day to day. It goes back to what you said from the beginning, like, the, you know, your government's going to sit here and tell you it's not that bad. But, hey, I, I just went to a fucking Mexican restaurant and spent twenty eight dollars for a burrito and fucking guacamole. Are you twenty eight bucks? Really? If I go to Mexico, I get that for five. What the? Like, I think you bring up a good point, though. I think one of the reasons most that, people that, don't care, right? I also think, though, one of the things that's that's kept us going this long is that buffer of the vastness of the U.S., the different regions of the U.S., and the different sort of cultures and sort of vibe in it. Because it's it's not a small place that you can just crush down. It's like it's so dispersed, like yeah. you said, with different sort of literally different terrain, different kind of way of living. And that that can sustain a lot of this bullshit in the big government because they're still going to do their thing. But eventually, they'll take your money out of your paycheck automatically, man. Yeah, yeah. Eventually, it's going to come for you though, because it's the government's big enough now to do this. Years ago, it was not big enough to really to affect you. Now, that's all it does is affect. Do the agents? Do you think? Do you think the agents at some point push back? Because that's what you said earlier. I think you talked about like giving respect to institutions. Yeah, not enough of them. Not enough of them. No. I want a president to go in and actually just literally fucking disband the FBI. I know it's like, I, uh, but and just redo something because right now it's just a fucking nest of vipers to get fucking crushed the DOJ. And if you were, if you were a guy on the in the DOJ or FBI who was actively involved in all this illegitimate shit, you you lose your job. Sorry. Like, how come? How can we have a country? where guys like John Brennan and Clapper who have lied to fucking Congress, they're still walking around. And the FBI is going after me and you. They're going after Catholic people because they're too hardcore. They're going after parents for protesting at a school because a trans kid raped their daughter. That's public enemy number that one. That was here. That's in fucking Virginia. It was in your state, right? Yep. Same thing though. Like, so that's what I'm saying is this is, but our, but our, our high, how does General Hayden and the rest of them who used to direct the CIA, how can these guys write a fucking testimony that say Hunter Laptop is disinformation? It's fake. We know it wasn't. It was real. And they're still walking around. They're still walking around. Like, dude, we literally don't have a justice system anymore. And you that cannot be sustained. There's got to be like armed revolution or something's got to clap. I'm serious. It's got you can't keep that up. Or everybody knuckles under and it becomes a different place. Well, I, and I, that's why that's that's why like you go back probably maybe it was an hour and a half ago at this point if 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 we're getting into this massive global scale like the, the government's not who people are going to ascribe their loyalties to man no i think dude that would be, we'll, we'll, we'll finish have a, it with that. i yeah. think it's a really good idea because like you cannot really they don't care about you and i don't think even even like in you know maybe even the church doesn't care about you on the ground level there's people in the church who do but I think the immediate, the I think the, immediate orbit is important. Yeah, I think the I think the the majority of the people in the church, from what I, just I, and I, I'm I'm new to this, so I won't pretend to know any more than you do. But I, I but I also think just with my conversations with Father Beeman, I think there's a lot more Father Beemans than there are the Pope. I agree with you. I agree with you, and I think it's almost like uh, we'll finish it with a Lord of the Rings bit, uh -oh. which is my favorite. So if you remember after the after all that shit, Sauron gets fucking defeated. And the hobbits go back to their homeland. They go back to the Shire. 
And Saruman, who escaped, has gone back there and he has turned the Shire. He's ruined it. He's burned down everything. He's conver- He's made these big mills that are just pushing filth. His whole goal was to destroy the Shire because he wanted to, because the hobbits deserved it. And they show up, these four hobbits. Gandalf says, you guys can handle this. Because he knew what was there and he knew they were going to have to deal with it. So they go in and it, the chapter is called The Scouring of the Shire. And it's funny because they, they show up and all these hobbits have been cowed and 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 coerced They're like well you guys can't stay here it's against the rules and sam's like if i hear any more fucking rules i'm gonna hurt somebody and so they end up basically and one of the other hobbits says dude we're glad you're here because all this is takes is to get the spark and this place is going to go up because they don't want this and they end up to, they get rid of all the bandits that have taken over saruman gets killed and they have to rebuild the shire and it's very emotional because like I remember Frodo says something like, you know, out of all the awful shit we saw in the war, this was the worst to come back and see our homeland affected by it so far away. And now we have to fix that. And they, they spend years doing it. And Frodo is, uh, you know, he's wounded. He's, I love that. Dude, if you haven't read Lord of the Rings. I haven't. Now you need to, as, 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 a, as a soon-to-be Catholic, you must understand that J.R. Tolkien was a Catholic. Okay. And there's a lot of Catholic sensibilities in Lord of the Rings. Okay. There is. They there's also- to, I'm telling you, there is. And and you will see that when you read it. And and there's so much redemption in Lord of the Rings. There's so many redemption arcs of characters like Boromir and and uh, um, Theoden, King Theoden, who's just like this, become this doddering old king, and he he rises to the challenge. He ends up he ends up being killed in battle, but he dies honorably. All these redemption arcs. And even probably the biggest hero of these of the book is is Frodo's friend Sam, who was just a gardener. But he's without Sam's effort. The, the brilliant thing about that book, because it's one book, there's three books, but it's one book, is that all those characters at some point in that story do something so fucking important. Might not seem like it at the time, that it echoes throughout, and you realize that. Without, I got goosebumps talking about it. Without that <laughs> effort, the whole thing falls apart. There's such yeah. common people doing heroic shit, noble people fulfilling their fucking their fucking their destiny, people who fail and are redeemed at the end. You have to read that now, knowing what you knowing about Catholicism. I'm going, to, I'm going to text you after all this and, and ask for all these reading lists. Um, yeah, I got some books for you to start. Yeah, art's always speaking to us, isn't it? Art, art, yeah, just like art is always kind of like from without it's- art is everything. Art is everything. Art is art is a reflection of what things are, and I think what we wish they would be. And mm-hmm. this is why I think so I was reading something the other day about cathedrals. Someone was asking this guy, like, why don't we build? You go to like the the cathedral at Cologne, and you're like, holy yeah, shit, I God, I want to go to that man. That I spent cool. time. I spent time in Malta because I did a whole series, a whole history yeah. channel. Uh, show about the Knights of Malta and you go in and you the first thing you do when you go into these massive cathedrals is you look up yeah yeah the basilica look, here in fucking DC man like you are elevated you're not looking yeah. down you're looking up yeah and it, it would take decades to build these things and this one guy was asked how come we don't do that how come we don't build cathedrals he goes because the people who built cathedrals they actually had beliefs Today we only have opinions. That's the that's build- fucking powerful right there, man. Powerful, dude. That's and fucking, I think, again, that's true. You, they that is very to, true. You had to believe in something to have generations get involved with the building of a cathedral that took decades. And um, oh man, there was a great book by Ken Follett. Maybe it was called Cathedral. It's a fiction book, but he talks about the build. Oh, man, shame on me for not remembering the title. I read it so long ago, but it was really good, and it was about that whole thing about a city, a town building this cathedral and how it was a generational effort and the stonemasons and artists and all that kind of stuff. And I love the idea that it's, it's people, the journey. It's the journey. They it's just, they had but it's also the journey. Like people just, it's the journey. you got something to do every single, it's purpose. It's journey. It's purpose. Yeah. Um, yeah don't have only opinions. You have to have beliefs. That's and awesome. I think yeah, that that's was, great. That was really, I was like, right on dude. And Did by you? the way, well, welcome to the faith, dude. I I'm think coming. I, like, I'm coming. Guys like you that come in are always, I think, the most interesting people to talk to 
and are some of the most ardent believers because you you came here by choice. You know, I was I was born into a Catholic family. I yeah. was baptized and confirmed and all that kind of shit. And I I I I, the, the, I will say this about Catholicism. I think and I joke around with my Protestant friends. They're just talking. I go, yeah, but you're wrong. I was Protestant before. Yeah. I, but I said they go, it's cool. You're a brother in Christ, but you're wrong. Yeah, you're yeah, wrong. no, you're, you're right because um, you're let me let me ask you: Did you know to get you? I know you got to get out of here, but did you? I learned this in the RCIA. Did you know the father of the Big Bang Theory was a fucking Catholic priest? I'm not surprised at all. Yeah, father, uh, father well, Lamacre. He was a yes, Belgian co cosmopolitist, cosmologist, Catholic priest, and he he was the one who came up with the Big Bang Theory. But how would that? Like, that is this goes back to my thing, like. Science is always moved by the hands of evil or the hands of men, of God. Listen, and the hands Greg of God Rendell, gave Greg Father Lamatre the ability to understand and know that the Big Bang theory, as we know it, came from a Catholic priest. Gregor Mendel, a Catholic monk, and was the first geneticist. He he started cross pollinating all these different beans, and he was like he was like the father of modern genetics. Catholic priest. All, it, when they say that the Catholic Church suppressed science that's a fucking straight up lie the catholic church was a uh benefactor and and provider did they get into arguments yes they did and that's okay you're supposed but, to yeah there's not wrong right? with that and, and there were and they were and you know like people are always arguing about like well Galileo, yeah yeah i think i think newton was catholic i think isaac newton was catholic so i, I get, and by the way there are unified physics guys now unified physics professors that's like they're the smartest dudes on the planet. These, some of these dudes, these are these are these are physics fucking powerhouses. Many of them have sat there. These are the guys pulling apart at a fucking level we can't. And they even say, "There's intelligent design. There's intelligent design." I'm sorry. And these are not idiots. These are not yeah, like no, you know. No, I I feel like it's also something that's been brought up. Like it's like he he Father Shire. He's oh, it's too late. Okay, so Father Shire talks about <laughs> the thirteen constants. That have to be present for life to just exist on earth if any of them are off by just the the biggest it's gone, it's gone it's right gone. that gone. It, intelligent design like it, it's not this didn't just fucking happen well someone said there was, i don't know the i don't know the exact numbers but someone was saying that so you're telling me that the idea that we finally got to an eyeball the evolution to an eye that can do what the human eye does there was like the the, the percentage of that just happening randomly is like crazy so you're telling me I'm a fucking crazy fucking uh, a, 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 like a, like an idiot for believing that that was designed as opposed to saying and denying that and go, no, that had to be a random event. Like that's well, a bigger that's a bigger belief. It's a bigger belief to think it actually was a random numbers thing than to say and, yeah, there was there was well, a hand. This, this was this was the conversation of the last class I went to was was Darwin and his theory of evolution. He's talking about the spiral of the fittest and he's like, no, God has never stopped. <laughs> right. They, the, the theory of evolution, it, it removes God. Right. But right. it goes back to intelligent design. It's like it, and this. These are things we do in business. It's called it's a literal field. It's called continuous improvement. Right. It's the same thing. Like God has never stopped. Like, OK, well, let me do this. OK, well, that's not fucking working too well. Let me do. You know what I mean? Like, so there's yeah. always something that's going on to improve ourselves well, physically, improve our lives physically. Well, and listen, how we observe I, the world, interpret the world. Intellect. Was, my, my, my degree is in anthropology and it was yep. it, because I was a bio guy for three years. It was mostly physical anthro, osteology, you know, uh, evolutionary theory, stuff like that. I mean, I've take I've actually held these hominid skulls. We and I, I so they were on the earth. So yep. you, I don't think you can have both. I don't think it, you don't I think you don't have to deny God and accept that things have moved that way, because is it any greater of a thing for God to like throw it all on the earth? And that's it. Or to breathe life into it, and it goes. Yep. And it goes. And he may he, maybe he doesn't control it all the time. Maybe he just it's he, no. I don't know. You, my point is to make a qualification of that is silly. Like, I, and I don't think you have to deny the Catholic Church has been the biggest, the, in many cases, the biggest proponent of science. Mm -hmm. I mean, the universities come from that they're Catholic. They're Catholic. Catholic colleges. And by the way, there's another great book called How the Irish Saved Civilization is by Thomas Cahill, which is funny because I'm Irish and we're worthless. But like, <laughs> but like, but God, God invented uh, whiskey to keep the Irish from ruling the world. 
it's work. But, but, it's but Cahill's book, he, he writes a book called, it's a, it's a really quick read and it's really interesting. It's called How the Irish Saved Civilization. And it's about how the monks, all these books and all these works were taken from continental Europe because it was all getting burned and it was just getting destroyed. And they brought it to Ireland and the monks sat there and transcribed all of it. All these Greek texts, all these things that would have been lost to, to that movement. And so without, and by the way, that was, those are Catholic monks doing that. They saw the validity of that. And the other thing that's cool about the Catholic church is that Catholicism understood in many cases, it was regional, like Irish Catholicism is, has got a very specific flavor to it. You couldn't beat that out of the Celts. You couldn't beat it out of them. So you incorporated it. So when they went to the new world, we have our lady of Guadalupe. There's a Latin American Catholicism that yeah. they adapted and they just, they co-opted it. They're like, yeah, okay, cool. And so they're, they're smart enough to realize, and you can just say, well, that was, that God already gave them that anyway. We're just kind of putting it in a better framework. I mean, you know, it's, it's doable. You don't have to sit there and go, oh no, no. <laughs> That's why I love it. It's well, great. Listen, man, I appreciate, yeah. I appreciate you talking to me. I'm glad everything's going good for you. Stay away from the fucking Pentagon, man. Right there. Oh, well, it's over there. I'll, 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 yeah, I'll shoot you a selfie from it. Um, all right, that's Terry Shepard. He's about to go read for a play, which I know you're going to win. I mean, are you rehearsing? No, I got the role. I okay. last year, last year I auditioned because I, I was, I was, I went to theater school. That's so I got out of. Group yeah, I know you're like a real actor. You're, a, you're, a, you're a thespian. Well, whatever. Yeah. But like, I hadn't been on stage for a long time. And shut the fuck up. And so last <laughs> fall. Oh, now he look at that. Now, now Terry fucking drops off. Oh, wait, now he's so, back. Look at that. I'm back. I was about to say, two hours in, now you drop off. Yeah, you're so last fucking year, internet, Bill. Your fucking app pay by the hour Wi Fi connection you got over there. Not because I'm using my phone and I forgot to put do not disturb. So I'm surprised <laughs> I got away with it this long. So, like last year on the park, they have a really good theater here at the beach, and I auditioned for it. And I got the lead role, and I was on stage like for like two hours and 20 minutes, and I was studying cool. my lines. While I was in the field doing Robin Sage and while I was in Vegas. So like, and I came in and I just like, I said, guys, I'm going to be gone. They, they offered me the role. I said, I'm going to be gone for this week, this week. I promise you I'll come back and I'll be off book. They're like, really? I go, yes. And I walked in off book. So this one is a supporting what, role. What that? It's this, but it's fun. It'll be fun. It's a cool play. The, this play, that play that I did was called uh, the man who came to dinner. It was a Broadway play in the late thirties. And Nathan Lane was in a, they made a movie out of it too. Betty Davis was in it, but then, they did a Broadway revival in 2000 and Nathan, I played the part that Nathan Lane was this like sort of pompous uh, critic writer who like, it's just pretty funny, dude. He falls down. He, he gets roped into doing this public tour. He doesn't want to do it. And he falls on these steps of this people in like, it was like Joe Biden. He just falls on steps. Well, he falls on steps cause it's icy. And then he, they think he breaks his hip. And so they move him into the house and he's in a wheelchair and shenanigans ensue. But it's pretty funny. And then uh, this one, this play I'm in now is called The Bad Seed. It's about this little girl who's a fucking killer. So, and but she's I an actual play. killer, or is she like you're saying she's that as killer. she's tough? Yeah, they made a no, no, she's a killer. They made a movie out of it. Uh, the same Broadway cast did the movie in the 50s, this creepy little girl. Oh my God. So, anyway, I have rehearsal for that tonight. We open next, not this weekend, next weekend. So. And where's this at? Because I, I, you know, hey, maybe at theater, of, theater of Dare. Theater of Dare oh, in. Yeah. In, 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 uh, it's in Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Yeah. Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Theater of Darren, it opens when? Uh, not this weekend, next weekend. Is that the 27th or something? 26th of October? That weekend? I wish you'd come. I wish, dude, you'd have, like, you'd have cracked up if you saw me in uh, the man. Hold on. Hold on. You know what? No, hold the fuck on, Terry. Hold on. There, there may be a mini road trip here. <laughs> it's on a Saturday you open? Uh, it's opens Friday, Saturday, and there's a Sunday matinee, and then the next weekend too. Do you what time do you perform on Saturday? Is it after, is it evening? Yeah, like seven thirty. I'm coming. <laughs> oh God, I'm there. Four and a half I'm hour drive. I'm only on stage for like fifteen or twenty minutes, dude. Give the shit. I got bourbon in a flask. I'm good. I'm coming. All right. I'm texting oh, you. I'm coming. Right. Well, listen, coming. brother. All the it's best like to your family. Yeah, you as well. Uh, again, so Terry Shepard, you follow him on Terry Shepard uh, on Twitter, and I'm going to tag you and everything because you're not following my new account. I have a new account. I'll have a do that because I'm terrible. Yeah. You know I'm terrible yeah. at all. I'm a boomer. Yeah, all right. Yeah, you're a boomer. Let me end this real quick, and then I'll tell you why in a second. All right, and 